In honor of St. Patty's Day, he dyed the pool green before doing his cold plunge. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice we've got a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grab? That's right. Handball, Brian. No Negro should enter this premise. Oh, boy. I got my uh, March Madness Madness bracket, uh, started to do a little work on that uh, today in between shows, so uh, be prepared for some vitriol. Oh, boy. Flying your way. Uh, Changing it up. I'll give you uh, some perennial (laughs) all-stars for the first bracket here. we got four salon flower guys, graffiti, LeBron James, Colin Kaepernick, AOC, and uh, CDC director Rochelle Walensky. Is this going to be like the, what What commercial was it when the guy's sitting in the chair and this fucking scarf is blowing back and he has the goggles on? I Max think L? it was Max was it, Yeah, L. that's going to be Brian and I while yeah. you're screaming. Yes, yes. Very, very effective print campaign <laughs> and maybe an ad, maybe. I, 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 don't I feel know like Flight of the Valkyries went with it, it's so iconic, it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, Will there be a Cinderella story oh. this year? Speaking of that, um, I was uh, laughing with Dr. Drew, speaking of uh, commercials, because for some reason, uh, Benson and Hedge's uh, cigarettes came up. Then I stopped and I said, oh, they sponsored the women's tennis tournament back in the day. They were <laughs> the main sponsor for ladies doing athletic the more refined, things. Yes, <laughs> and I thought, wow. And that was, you know, definitely in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was a cigarette company sponsoring a women's athletic event. Wow. Yes. Is it the only cigarette you can smoke with tennis elbow? Like, what was their angle? I, you know, it, they, they just got sponsors back day, a camel Cigarettes sponsored all the car stuff. I have a Camel Pace car, yeah. you know. There was like, so okay. you know, F one and Marlboro was all. I mean, cigarettes were all over sports yeah. and, and events. You back might then. think, oh, it's okay to smoke. You're just sitting down driving a car. I imagine you'd want as much lung capacity when you're driving at that speed as humanly possible. <laughs> Yeah, you don't it, want to go into an emphysema attack. You one would one would think, Wheezing. but but yeah. they it just it, there was no correlation between the event right. and smoking. But they would sponsor Eyeballs. all that wow. stuff. It sounds uh, insane right now. Mm-hmm. Is this your first time filling up a glass of water? Filling it up? <laughs> you, you went right to the. Oh. That's where the sip <laughs> gone. No, what I what I did. <laughs> What I did was I had a cup in here from doing a bunch of earlier pods that I forgot about when I went to the other shop, and then I filled up a new cup, and then I transferred. Uh, mm-hmm. I transferred the yeah, precious yeah, uh, liquid. Yeah. yeah. You called it just right. <laughs> so, uh, yes, my cup uh, almost runneth over, but uh, I'm going to need to lubricate because... Yeah. Uh, That's true. Hydrate. hydrate I'm going to need yeah. to hydrate because uh, I'm going to be doing some screaming soon. So your age, you got to stretch. Yeah. You got to stretch it out. Yeah. I uh, I saw something that was uh, right up there with my, you know, apocalyptic sort of hellscape Los Angeles thing, which is, you know, if I've always said when we started putting barbed wire around the freeway signs, that, that's when it's time to pump the brake. You know, it's sort of like, you know, it's like you saying, um, you know, you got a 14 year old that's out of control and you're putting a padlock on the liquor cabinet and you're going, wait a that's minute, a wait song, a minute. Right? Yeah, maybe we need to get this kid some help. Right. Maybe it's not all about just physically preventing them from oh, getting God. into the liquor. Maybe maybe we need to figure out what's going on with that 14-year-old. Right. Um, Los Angeles has a lot of that. When we started putting, um, remember the quaint days when we were just going to the CVS and locking up the razor cartridges? Just the razors. The Home Depot, yep. we were locking up the spray paint. Like, well, now it's just smash and grab. Well, and, yeah. and, and they're probably- Deodorant, ta- toothpaste. Everything's more, there, there shall be more things in cages mm-hmm. than available. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. You know, fly swatters and rolls of uh, paper towels mm-hmm. will probably still be Scott's in the general tape. pop, mm-hmm. but anything over eight bucks is going to be in the cage in Los Angeles. Not a good sign. No. But uh, saw this when I was driving along the Santa Monica freeway, heading this direction, uh, where a little after PCH sort of morphs into the 10 freeway, uh, saw a construction crew working on the uh, underpass. They were putting up a big caged fence that was going to, now you're going to know, it's the underpass as it, so it's a, 
it's the overpass, underpass, uh, depending on what side of it you're on, and then the uh, dirt berm yeah. kind of flattens out at the top, and then there's a dirt berm, and then the, the freeway. Mm-hmm. They were caging the entire thing so because not to allow campers people were sleeping. camping under. I mean, hey, who doesn't want yeah. to live in Santa Monica? Uh, I mean, it's it's perpetually seventy yeah. degrees, and uh, you know the fishing's fine. I haven't seen the cages going up. That's welcome news because uh, we're seeing a lot of fires over on the west side for people on these uh, freeway embankments, basically either the, mm-hmm. the easement, like you say, or the sort of roundabout thing, and mm-hmm. in the little center circle, they're just they're they're having campouts and cooking, and as one would do if they were you know uh, out in the world. But that's very dangerous. Yeah, so they're, they're now, and they're thick cages. They are, cages. they're the kind of- Maybe to of, keep them in. Yeah, that'd be nice if they didn't notify them. What's that the cage you want? They're man? literally uh, building thick steel barriers that are, I, I'm, I'm sure at a, at a cost of $250,000 oh, per berm, yeah. you know, and it's all going up around there. So now we're going to cage that off. And uh, again- it's okay, but back to the liquor cabinet uh, yep. padlock. Maybe we should be taking a, you know, uh, the people that like to uh, get at the root causes mm-hmm. of everything. Uh, they're not so rooty when it comes to homeless. <laughs> no, just they're, a Band-Aid. The root causes for, they want to get to the root cause mm-hmm. of, you know, systemic racism, but they're not so much into the homeless Mm-mm. situation. I would argue I'm with you on your root cause, but let's stay consistent. So uh, That reminds mm. me when you're talking about, you know, caging things up in the store. It just reminded me, did you see that great SNL sketch over the weekend of the Amazon Go store where you can just walk out with oh, the item? They were terrified. It's, it, you want to see I a part of it? it? I just yeah. sent it to Kaylin. It's, it's, a, it's pretty funny. I, Kenan, uh, uh, Kenan Thompson. Also in the uh, etiquette department, I don't know where you guys are at with this, but um, I have noticed and I, I, it's something I caught on to uh, very early in my uh, construction life, which is uh, the guys in the cotton T-shirts that are out there swinging the hammers versus the Armenian guys who are doing the counter stone. The Armenian guys mm-hmm. do the stonework. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's different ethnicities sure. for yeah. groups. Specializing. So, yeah, so stucco's 100% Hispanic. Okay. Uh, but stonework is Middle Eastern okay. and, and and of that ilk. Those guys were the guys who showed up. It's so funny. They had their dress loafers and they had their work loafers. <laughs> like they had tasseled loafers and a lot of rayon shirts. Oh, you know, all the Armani exchange you can handle. They they had work rayon and yes. work slacks yes. and work tassel loafers. They didn't have, you know, the white dudes were always like t-shirts and cutoffs and boots, tennis shoes or whatever. And but the Hispanics are always like long sleeve button up, like well, a the flannel. His- Hispanics have figured out whitey is in the cutoffs with the shirt off. Yeah. Hispanics, and you'll see the women walking through with the umbrella and Smart. they're covered. Their, their thing is we'll keep the sun off mm-hmm. of our skin, not directly are invite it whitey's like it's hot i gotta take my <laughs> yeah. shirt off and the hispanic's like i gotta i need a long sleeve me, to keep the sun yeah, off right. off hand me, that, me hand me that shirt yeah yeah but the i noticed that uh the guys rocking the rayon had a little funk going on could yeah. be part partly cultural <laughs> rayon doesn't but well. there's uh they just the guys wearing the synthetic fabrics had something going on that the that the dudes in the cotton tees didn't have Astute. I was uh, up on stage, I think, for the uh, late show in Kansas City. Is this and- a continuation of the story? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, good, oh. good, good. Oh, I'm like, it's a hard left turn. <laughs> and I was wearing uh, like a rayon type Like the green? Shirt, yeah. yeah. I was wearing the green Look shirt. Look nice. Look nice. Uh, also, uh, misplaced my toiletry bag. So I had like the backup bag with just missing a few mm. parts and uh, no deodorant. Oh, boy. And uh, realized that the, the combination between doing two 90-minute shows. Hot lights. Hot <laughs> lights. It was a little hot up on stage. Working that mic pretty hard mm-hmm. uh, and wearing the rayon minus the deodorant. Got a little something, a little lather going. Adam you know? Carolian. Yep. And uh, it wasn't wasn't bad. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a funky guy in that department. But if I notice anything, it's like something for me because I'm just that's not my thing. It could been that bad because when I first started here, you made me smell your 
zip up fire suit or no the long johns that were under your zip up fire suit and it really wasn't that bad it wasn't really smelling it It literally gagged it just the the, the idea that my boss was making me do this yes but it didn't smell that bad (laughs) everybody (laughs) everybody has to do it gina if you want to work it if you want to play ball and the reason i did that is because when i get out of the car the long johns that i'm wearing are 100 percent soaking wet with right. sweat. There is not a dry patch on the elbow. It is, I have, there's pictures of it. I, on my back, will soak through the fire suit, which is, you yeah. know, uh, seven layers of Nomex or whatever. I, I will go through it. If, when I am um, six-way harnessed into this car and burning a lot of mental and emotional calories along with some physical stuff, I just sit there and sweat. That's mm-hmm. That's all I do. And uh, yes, when it dries, it's a, I think, cotton. Um, I'm not sure what it's, it's fireproof to some degree. Anyway, oh, it might have had that copper It doesn't infused, smell like, yeah. it doesn't really smell like yeah, anything. No. But uh, I did notice uh, by the second show, I'd worked up a little lather oh, and I boy. got a little funk going. Not much, but I could tell. Did you and have to get out in front of it? You're like a guy with, don't, with no gas that goes to like, you know, happy hour at a Mexican restaurant. It's like, you only, you're only one man. You can only have so much. Right. Yeah, so I was like, eh, I can, I can tell a little, but it's on me, but it's not bad. But uh, when I was, uh, I'm asking for for uh, Heloise. I was after the show, and uh, I was taking pictures oh, with everyone no, after the not show, the meet and, greet. and I put my arm around a gal, and uh, she went, uh, "Woo." She said, Matthew McConaughey, Musk. Oh, my. Now, she'd had a couple drinks, you know. Truth potion. I I think there's a context here. I just did 90 minutes on my feet. Sure. Fucking shouting into a microphone. Out of the mouths of babes. But, uh, (laughs) and I think she was cute, too, and Uh had a few drinks. So those people are a little more forthright. Uh I've I've noticed with their opinions, the the ladies who are attractive. Uh, But I'm thinking, uh, where are we at with that? That the... Funny. I'm guessing fueled by the booze. If she was sober, she probably would have kept it to herself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's go- that's, a, that's a little unseemly. All right. Uh, another uh, poll I'd like to take around here. Max Pata can do a quick check. When I was uh, talking to uh, Dr. Drew, and we we're talking about you know success, how how one measures success, Please. and. Uh, I said, well, from zero to 18, it's school. You're a good student or you're a bad student. Yes. Kid's smart or kid's dumb. It's pretty much, that's how we measure it. And then at some point when you get out of the scholastic environment, then it just becomes money. That's the other yardstick we use to measure people. Sometimes it's daddy's money, so we factor that in. But we just pretty much go from here to there. Now, I was scholastically a zero, I mean, I was, you know, Close. there was a lower, the, the low, you could go lower than me scholastically, but you couldn't attend school. <laughs> that would be the caveat. Uh-huh. You'd have to die in a moped right. accident when you're 14 right. or, be truant for or life. just be in juvie, yeah. but uh, you couldn't actually attend Show on up. a regular basis yeah. and, and do worse scholastically than I did. Those guys with a bad quarterback rating, but they never took a snap. They're, zero. Right. They're at zero. That's right. I was there. Most days with my ceramics major mm-hmm. and my, you know, 1.7 GPA, again, with six A's would have to be backed out for football and baseball every year. Uh, if you wanted to get a real scholastic mm-hmm. sure. rating of what that, I, God knows what my academic life would be if you backed out the six A's from three years of, of sports. But you know, Jamarcus Russell minus the Russian. Right. The Russian I was just about to say that. So, uh, and, and, so I was at a zero uh, in terms of success, right. you know, and then, uh, you know, when I you know when I got out it, or before I got out, it was, you know, working at McDonald's for two dollars and 41 cents an hour and working at the flask liquor store for five bucks an hour and then just literally digging ditches mm-hmm. for seven bucks an hour. So from, you know, maybe zero to 30, 31, I, in terms of yardsticks to measure success, I you, you'd be hard pressed to score lower than I did because 
There were a couple guys from the neighborhood who were like pretty shitty students, but they got a job over at Gelson's mm-hmm. and they got into the union mm-hmm. and they were bagging yeah. and they got up to $14 an hour Shit. and they got a little golden time on, on a holiday and they got some benefits. You know, yeah. you, I didn't have any benefits, right. any it's golden time, any anything. So I was I was very low. But I said, I said, Drew, I know I always kid about it, but is there a person in this building that never took algebra. Oh. Now most oh, wow. most kids That's freshman year. Mostly they start giving it out in eighth or ninth grade. And yeah. when I was in junior high, I definitely remember some of the kids mm-hmm. in ninth grade algebra or eighth grade algebra. Yeah. Was it an who, option not to take it? Who I evidently it was. Well what I was gonna say was I can do you better. I had to take it twice. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, we're getting Not somewhere. Strong but you enough. still doubled my tally. That's right. Who amongst us in this building? And there's a, there's a fair number of dumb shits in here. I, I mean, I'm going to be straight up <laughs> with a, you. A sneaky there's number. There's a lot of unimpressive. A number. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who has not taken algebra at any level at any time? Oh, Chris's parents will not allow that. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I have the results, Adam. Mm-hmm. Everyone's good. Everyone has taken algebra. Yeah. So I'm the only human being who never took algebra in, it, in the modern era. How did you get out of it? Um, I I had to take it. In, we called it double O done in college. I think I think, I think I think there was some profiling going on by oh. the uh, faculty at North Hollywood High they and, and, they were and the administration. I would have loved to have been profiled for I this. Was, Coaches yeah. want to keep you eligible. That's right. Yes, I was. I was put into what was uh, euphemistically just sort of called high school math. You know, although it's not that euphemistic. And Arithmetic. then uh, after failing biology, I got drummed down to what they called science. Oh, that's like cool. fifth which grade. Which just science just yeah. means you just sit there and try not to light anything on fire that, with the Bunsen burner. Well, you often bring it up, but that's an indication that you're a bad student because biology is just memorization. Remember what, uh, you know, what uh, the mitochondria is. It's all just parts of things, you know what I mean? You don't mm-hmm. have to, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of figuring, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like you have to be a, especially like a smart chemistry. person. Yeah, my thing is I couldn't read, so I, I they could, they'd tell you here's the book right. and here's the assignment. I, just, I could I couldn't do it. What is cytoplasm? No idea. <laughs> Mr. Gilliverdi could tell you. Is that the same as protoplasm? It's completely different. No, the opposite. He uh, he it's failed me, cell. and uh, <laughs> then uh, then but now the miraculous part when I did end up attending. L.A. Valley College, go Monarchs at some point to try to conti- butterflies. Try to continue my uh, no king uh, royalty uh. royalty. <laughs> trying to uh, try, even better. Trying to continue my football career uh, was 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 given placement tests to figure out where yeah. to where to put you. Uh, was then placed in advanced algebra. The fuck? That's upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it means probably two things. There, I, I, I'm good at math in yeah. my head, and the test has to be for shit. Because how could you take well, someone who's never participated in it and place them in advanced algebra? I, well, I should have been in the low tier algebra. I'll make the case for advanced algebra because one, you're smart and you know math. You're, you're, you're just you're naturally yeah. okay at math. I do. I hadn't thought of it until you mentioned this. I think jokingly, but now I'm thinking. I bet the coaches were kind of talking to the administration like, hey, keep this kid eligible. He's on the edge. He's getting mm. A's for baseball and football. He needs every help he can get. Put that kid in fucking math. We don't need him in algebra right now. No. Oh, you, cared. like in high school. Yeah, you're yeah. Talking about. Okay, yeah, 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 but exactly. it doesn't explain but, the exactly. college test. Right. No, but by the time you got to college, you had accumulated the knowledge to do A squared plus algebra. B squared equals C squared. But I didn't know. Is that it? I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know algebra. I never was exposed to algebra. It is fair. I, I have do no you answer. Do think it's, it's weird. fairly intuitive? Gina? I, I don't know. Gina. I've never taken it. The, yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't have anything to. The was a lot of math stuff. I'm trying to compliment you. I, th- yeah. I think you're good enough well, in math that you could figure out algebra. This is, I'll answer you, Brian, and this won't shock you. I actually liked algebra. I had fun doing it. I just never got the right answer. <laughs> so d- is everyone's personality falling into place now? You like played Mario, but like you died in <laughs> the first. You, you check, you know, you check your answer in the back and I'd be like, this is great. Like they're puzzles. And I never got them right. Dawson taught pre calculus what in the high fuck? school. That's right. Wow. I was the only one in my class who understood pre-calculus. Math was so much fun in high school. Oh. Wow. I was the only one in my class who understood pre-calculus and when my teacher had, uh, and this happened at least once a week, when he had uh, papers to grade or other stuff wow. he wanted to do, he would put 
a, uh, a problem on the chalkboard. Goodwill hunting. And go, Dawson, explain this. And then wow. he'd go grade papers. And I would teach the class, walk through you. it, uh, answer all the questions. And it was, it was super fun. That's how I graduated from high school, actually. I, I didn't have enough PE credits to graduate. I should have shared. Because I, had, I, I had too many injuries. <laughs> and I couldn't play any sports anymore. And, um, and the, uh, my pre-calculus teacher was also the girls' swim coach. And he said, uh, come and tutor the girls in wow. math, and I'll give you enough PE credits to graduate. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, and then I took my first physics class in college and quit. Physics yeah. is tough. Yeah. Um, all right. And uh, Chris was put on probation from doing math in college? <laughs> no, I, I actually I was encouraged to take a math test senior year in high school, like after, one of, after school, and I took it. I fell asleep mid-test, was waking up, Still finished it and passed with such a high score, I didn't have to take math in college. Oh, you're excused from oh. taking math in college? What? Yeah. That you can test insane. out of certain subjects. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you're so proficient, oh, they won't make God. you take Spanish. You know what I mean? So besides the three of you scholars, did anyone else not have to take chemistry or calculus? I, I certainly wasn't a contender for either. Never calculated. I took chemistry. That I, was part I, of the. I didn't take chemistry. The... No, I never took chemistry. Okay. I made it through I college without ever having to take chemistry. Yeah. Um, wow. Then, then this discussion. You weren't uh, good at geometry. Sorry to interrupt. Geometry. Yeah, yeah. Angles, never, never took know. it. That's all. Yeah, what you ended up doing. Um, so uh, then this discussion as uh, with Doctor Drew as well. So we were uh, talking. This is the about, success discussion. Yes. No, we moved on <laughs> okay. to. Uh, but but it was on the theme of being a young person and being in junior high and high school and that kind of stuff. And uh, he said. Uh, where are all the rebels? Like when I was a kid, you know, they would have told you to put a mask on and there would have been a big revolt. Right. No one would have done it. Right. And then I said, no, Drew, you're a pussy. You would have worn the fucking mask for sure. Because also you had a college to think about. You had right. like a future right. academically to think Something about. Something to lose. Yeah. My, I treated school like you treat a rental car. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, let's see what happens. You put it in reverse <laughs> when you're moving forward. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to keep uh, this so thing. Mine, I don't like need it, it for anything. Yeah. I don't have any brag sheets or I don't, I, I don't, I don't need to pad my resume. No. I'm not going anywhere, but Drew. Now look, I like Drew, but he's a puss. I mean, let's face it. He does what he's told. He would have done it. He would have done. It. I said, I definitely wouldn't have done it. No one, I mean, Ray and Chris, no. those guys wouldn't, they wouldn't have been there. He would have worn it as a bikini bottom. They only would have showed up to wear the mask and then not wear the mask. Right. It would have definitely put it around their junk. Yeah. For sure. And I said, uh, look, here's how I know I wouldn't have done it. I said, I remember in the uh, eighth or ninth grade, Mr. Walters, uh, scary ex Marine PE coach, um, can you find, Chris, a picture of Mr. Walters I'll try. from uh, Walter Reed uh, circa, you know, 1977 <laughs> or eight or whatever? Uh, the PE coaches were badasses sure. and they hated kids and they fought them. I have I have seen Mr. Hensley fight Mike Reese. Physically. Physically. Yeah, like headlocks and shit. Physically. Not arguing. Pouring right. rain. Mike tried to throw his milk carton into a trash can that was out in the field in the mud in the rain or whatever and just missed and he was sitting under the the covered seating mm -hmm. area they had the benches mm -hmm. and the awning and the thing and the quad you know and he and mr hensley just looked at him and went mike get out there and pick it up and it was like raining so hard and the field was so muddy and stuff mike just like looked at him and looked at the trash can and went come on turn back to what he was doing Fucking headlock, <laughs> headlock, man, full figure four on Mike, swinging him around, dragging him out in the mud I love to get it. the to get the the milk bottle to get the milk carton from the mud. I go, get it the fucking out of here! He's just like struggling, and he's dragging him out to the trash can in the pouring rain. Oh yeah, is he part of waste management now because it was so traumatizing? <laughs> I don't know what happened to my guy. Can't we worked at a dealership or something mm. in a mechanics bay or something? But uh, I saw him. No, I saw him fight, Jesus. and uh, I saw Mr. Tompkins uh, uh, try to fight Mike again. Actually, maybe the problem was with Mike. But uh, no way he, to know. He he stormed out of the class, and Mr. Tompkins followed him down that hall, told him to throw down. Oh yeah, nice. 
He yelled. It was the. It was like, I. I it was the most entertaining I've ever been in class. Like, she yelled at Mike, "Get out of here! You go down to the principal's office." And Mike was like a big kid. He was a little bit rowdy, you know. Yeah. And he he just looked at Mr. Tompkins. He's like, "Oh, fine." And then he he just blurted out, "Like sometimes I wish I could kick your ass." And he started to walk down the hall, mm-hmm. and Tompkins just went flying out of the now? class. And he yelled, "That's my middle name. Oh, Bring my it God. on!" <laughs> like I mean. To be willing to fucking throw down yeah. with with students. And so you knew that was on the table. That was on the table. Like if you fucked with Mr. Hensley or Mr. Walters or Mr. Saponzi, it would end up in fisticuffs. It, it could go, it, it could escalate very quickly oh to God. that. It can go from, you know, throwing the milk carton to laughing it off to headlock, physical confrontation. And the pouring rain, very cinematic. So that was on the table. So if you defied these guys, there was a decent chance that something could go down. And when I showed up in my, uh, for PE, wearing my shirt and blue jeans, and uh, Mr. Walters yelled at me to go back in the locker room and go get my gym trunks on. And I came back out with those gym trunks pulled over my jeans. I never took the jeans off. And then he... (laughs) He got pissed off and then uh, yelled, I was a donkey, and then I had to go to the donkey squad, and I was in the donkey squad, and I was the leader of the donkey squad, and uh, he he said that uh, (laughs) someone made- That's great. Someone made a a logo, a badge, Walter Reed, junior high, Mr. Walter's donkey squad, official member. That's awesome. He was a big dude. Uh, By the way, you know, we talk about bald (laughs) back when bald was a thing or wasn't a thing or was a big deal. You know, he had the buzz cut in 1977. He I mean, he he was keeping it. He had the mm. Marine. Yeah. He had the haircut that your stepdad would threaten you with if you didn't get your shit together. I mean, it was literally, I will cut your hair. Yeah. And you will look like a Marine. Right. What is your major malfunction, num nuts? He'd be yeah. ostracized. Oh, uh, he, he was awesome. But he yelled at me. And then at some point I had to go back to the donkey <laughs> squad. Wow, this is Mr. Walters when he is like 80, 75 years old we're looking at. We got to get him in here. But uh, Get on your knees, come back. I don't well, think be, he's with oh, us he's anymore. With us. But I mean, this no. guy was all forearms. You could tell. And all Popeye anger. Popeye forearms. Yes, yeah. And he scared the shit out of everyone. But I still chose to pull the shorts up over the jeans and come back out and address him, which That's means... That's how you know teenage brains are not fully formed. I would have never worn a mask. No. That, that one act yeah. gets me into the category of the, would be the rebellious non-mask wearing group. Or you'd that. wear it as a yarmulke. Right. Yeah, yes. Patch. Right. Right. So uh, there, was, uh, there was that. Also, Mr. Walters, his big thing was is... He didn't want to put his hands on the kids himself per se. Uh, he couldn't. He had kids he didn't like. But he was like John Gotti had goons. <laughs> he had goons. Ray was his goon. <laughs> Wait, Ray did his dirty Ray work. His muscle. Ray was two times bigger than everybody Ray in that bull. school, <laughs> and he would he would dispatch Ray to go out and do his bidding. I would think Ray would be like, you don't tell me what to do, but it, for this, to get to beat up other kids, it's perfect. There was a slushy machine in the office. The 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 PE office need. had a slurpy machine, a Done. slushy Got machine. <laughs> and they were like, you know, 25 cents or 50 cents, you know, way out of my right. bracket. You know, I Can't never had any fucking money for anything, but you could get a hit off the slushy machine. But first, I need you to do me a favor. So there was that kind of relationship. The day might come while calling you for a <laughs> yeah, favor. Yeah. Oh, the day may never come. <laughs> Most of it was, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty pedestrian type stuff. Kneecaps. A lot of kids on their back in the weight room with the barbell with the small weights on it over their neck. That's not real. You could breathe if you turn your head sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't do it, you know, straight up. You, 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 had, you had about three and a half inches worth of air between the bottom of the bar and the gym mat, and you could, you could, it wouldn't kill you, but you couldn't get the weight off you no. because it was in such a weird position, and uh, you'd have to kind of stay there for a while. 
Could you imagine? I can't. I, I mean, this would be headline news across the country How much these days. I know. This is why whenever I hear the bullying, like, she put his arm on her shoulder and pulled her away from the president. I'm like, just bullying. Says, There's assault. They physically assaulted the report. I'm like, oh. Let, let me, me tell you. It. Let me tell you how assault <laughs> works. Take a stroll with me down memory lane. Yeah, Walters. God, I think he must have died in the '90s or something. I don't know. Chris can figure it out. But uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it was. It was okay. Look, many a lesson was learned in the makeshift corral of the Donkey Squad. You know, he built a corral. Now he didn't. He didn't have to pull a permit or anything. <laughs> he just took four benches and he spread them out about the length of a bench and he made a it's square an <laughs> and he put it in the corner by the by the handball court and when you got ordered to the corral that's where you'd have to go you'd have to just go there and sit i and always think. thought the donkey corral was more of a state of mind i didn't know he put you in a pen no it was a place mm. it was a location <laughs> And you could go there. Like with, Aloha. It's, it's a thing, but it's also a place. Right. You could go there with the other donkeys and really wow. just think about how how you got there. Let you me know? guess. I bet you weren't allowed to sit on the bench. You had to stand there and sort of pace no, back and forth. No, no. I, I think, I think <laughs> or maybe wow. when he was busy with something, you know, uh, you know, cleaning out the Slurpee machine or something, you could, you could grab a seat. But wow. uh, it was always, you got to the corral by... Getting minus points, no. and that got you into the donkey squad, and you would get you know two minus four minus whatever. But I bet this is a vestige of the past. I- I'm going to go ahead and guess that no girls were ever put in the donkey squad. No. Okay. No, there was. I had a feeling there was no commingling. We had no idea who the female oh, PE right. coaches were. were. Yeah, we yeah, never yeah. saw them. It was a completely separate group. But in general, like with Ray, I mean, maybe they had their own goons. But girls were not usually part of the equation when it came to this type. Of shit, I would imagine in that time period. No, I, they were not. Down now. My, my biggest problem was I never had my shit together with the PE clothes. I I didn't huh. have same. I my the home I lived in, either home, my dad's home and my mom's home. Between the two, there was zero dryers <laughs> and one washing machine, so we didn't have. A washer right. and a dryer. My mom just had the washer, which meant you could wash your PE clothes. You couldn't do it the night before no. and, and then hang it out on the clothesline and blah, blah, blah. So I was always going out there. Two guys uh, named George. I think it was George Scare and George Espinoza. And so I'd come out there and I'd be wearing the shirt inside out. Because Espinosa would be like my locker partner, and he'd be absent that day, and I didn't have my gym clothes. And then oh, yeah. Mr. Walters would be looking at me because I had the gold side out instead of the green mm-hmm. side out. And he goes, Carol, turn your shirt around. Then I'd turn around. It said Espinosa and like big letters <laughs> in the front of it. So I was half. Yeah, you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. He should have put my parents in the donkey squad. <laughs> He just said, what's wrong with this kid? Yeah. Something's He's going on neglected. here. He's Yeah. See, he needs clothing. All right. So, um, I definitely would have been amongst the rebel upstarts that uh, did not wear the mask. And Dr. Drew definitely would not have been. Agreed. I'm curious. Uh, we should put it out there. Mm-hmm. Another staff poll. Who would have been amongst those people? Now, here's the thing. You cannot just uh, be kind and uh, wax poetic about your history. I know who Drew was. He, he would have not been part. He's, he's very dutiful. Oh. I'm going to need examples of you defying. Look, I probably had 175 right. of these, but I, the 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 shorts over the over the jeans yeah. is a defiant moment, and I'm going to need one of those from everyone's history in order to prove that you would have been on the good side right. of history. I think it would just be easier since you're such a profiler. You tell people who if they would have worn a mask or not. I I um I I don't know how everyone was when they were okay. in the ninth grade. Okay. Let, we'll we'll put you we'll get you out of high school. Let's put you in the ninth grade. Okay. See, oh, that is high yeah, school for, for a lot of people. Yeah. But we'll put no, you in the eighth. Yeah. Put you in the eighth grade. All right. Let me tell you about Simply Safe U.S. News, PC Magazine, and Popular Science. All ranked Simply Safe Home Security, Best Home Security, of 2021, and U.S. News just named Simply Safe Best Home Security of 2022 as well. They're on a roll, man. This is a great company, and the products are great, and they're very small. They don't take up a lot of room. The batteries last up to 10 years. There's not some guy who is going to crawl around your house and make a mess and pull wires and drill holes. And you can protect every door, every window, 24-7, 
backed by uh, professional monitoring, the best in the business, ready to dispatch police, firefighters, and EMTs as well. Less than a buck a day. Set it up yourself. Takes about half an hour. No long-term contract. Try it for 60 days free. Customize your home's perfect system in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go there today and get the free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Simplysafe.com slash Adam. All right. Well, we'll try to figure out who the rebels mm-hmm. w- were. But again, I need I need to see a passport. I need an, an act of defiance. And uh, we got March Madness Madness. Uh, and uh, who else we got coming up? Oh, uh, host of the Guys uh, We Fuck podcast. Kareen and Christina will come in. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll do that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam, dude. I went to middle school in the 70s, and the woodshop teacher had his own set of paddles. And if we fucked off in his class, he would stand us on this line, tell us to bend over, and he'd beat our ass. Fucking goddamn shop teachers. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah. Shop teachers. It it would have been a tie between the shop teachers and the PE teachers as to who hated kids more. They fucking despise them. But thank God it's where Mr. Burcham came from. That's true. I, they, it was so, so, yeah, it was so burned into my psyche that God, why do these guys hate these kids yeah. so much? It was so, such a weird time. But anyway, uh, all right, we got our staff poll for uh, Rebels, uh, junior high yeah. Rebels. So the Rebels, do you want, the Rebels are Ryan. Mm hmm. Oh, no, sorry. The Rebels are Emmy, Gary, and Dawson. Yeah. Okay. Do they have acts of defiance so that we could? Uh, <laughs> Emmy we could says judge? yes. He, I, he's, he's... I see it at every airport Look, with Dawson. If I had to wear a mask, how was I going to spit out my dip in <laughs> class? That's a good point. So, <laughs> <It's> good point. <laughs> All right, you got us. Yeah, you got us on that one. Wow. And uh, who who are the sheep, Chris? <laughs> the sheep. Uh, the sheep are Chris. <laughs> Chris. Uh, Kaylin. Who's the first one again? Chris. <laughs> Oh, you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was in high school. I was young. I don't know. Junior high. Junior high. Junior high, whatever. I was, yeah, still. I was, mm-hmm. I was dumb. Mm-hmm. Chris, <laughs> Kalen, Ryan, and Matt. Yeah. Okay. I buy it. Yeah. Sure. Emmy, uh, act, of, uh, act of defiance. Actually, I have a perfect example. When we were uh, 10th grade, they started introducing school uniforms, which we didn't use before Mm -hmm. and uh i along with almost everyone just wouldn't use it would just wear the pants the slacks would uh wear the shirt tucked out or i just wouldn't wear it at all Mm. so for quite a while my mom would get phone calls and Uh i would be in detention Uh so that's a defiance an act of clothing defiance which is what a mask mandate would be it's uh it's strong uh it's consistent gary your your act of huh? defiance, so we can properly vet you. I don't know. I'm still thinking. I'm trying to figure it out. the The best thing that comes to mind isn't. I, I would call more of a prank. I, me and my friends were the only ones who understood how the digital marquee board out on the corner in front of the school worked mm-hmm. and how to change it. So we changed it for a few days and claimed that we couldn't get the software to work to change it back. Mm-hmm. And I like then it. Eventually relented. What you what did say on it? Click I, it or ticket? <laughs> you Buzz are traffic? driving is drunk driving. <laughs> I believe it had some stupid joke that would have made sense only to the four people who had perpetrated the prank. It, I buy that. Some reference to some, I don't know, we used to call ourselves some stupid thing. All right. Know. Oh, well, you don't, you don't forget you what You don't remember that part? No forgetting. Sure do, Brian. Oh, come on. I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. believe it either. Mm-hmm. Well, the cactus shooters. Not exactly Norma <laughs> Ray <laughs> material, <laughs> but <laughs> but so okay, come on, what'd you write on there? I'm gonna stick with cactus shooters. Yeah, not a story about something I didn't even do that Brian brings up once every six months. <laughs> oh man, it's a fun story. 
All right. All right. And is there anyone? Anyway, only two rebels amongst us? Oh, we got Brian and yeah, Gina yeah. here. And Dawson, yeah. Oh, we no, could... Dawson. Yeah. Dawson dipped in oh, class. I don't want That's to step right. on Dawson's fire. <laughs> we, I, Adam, we really could fill the rest of any segment with a long, sad litany of my rebellious slash disruptive behavior. Um, I was a very bad student, both in class. Uh, I, my, I think I've told the story before. My history teacher, who I liked... Mr. Bertetta called my house after I was particularly disruptive one day in uh, sophomore year, left a message in my machine. I got home from school. My mom said, Brian, what is this? Press play. It was Mr. Bertetta on a long screed about what a terrible student I was. He finished it. This is legend by saying, Brian is the worst student I've had the misfortune of teaching in my 30 years. Wow. Grab that. He left a message. <laughs> I'm That's shocked. How does, but how does one get to USC from yeah. there? I had extra, extra. I pulled it together towards the end of high school, and okay. I had that extracurriculars. I was the editor of the paper. I was a good writer, so I wrote a good essay. But I saw. I've told this. I've talked about this before. But I suffered from crippling ADHD, and and that, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the parts of that is that you forget essential items all the time. I lost my glasses monthly. I just wouldn't forget homework, and I failed. Middle school PE you had an F, a full on F in PE, not for not showing up, not for not for <laughs> not being bad or not doing the stuff. I forgot my shorts every day. Mm. Every day oh, I forgot my you should have had a lock. You should have had George Espinosa <laughs> as a locker I forgot partner. My, my summer, and then you yep. get a minus point every after three months of minus points. An I F. got an F in P. Who? What eighth grader gets an F in P? <laughs> For in square dancing, especially the guy who was a uh, you know blue chip prospect of Thank the All Star <laughs> baseball <laughs> Thank team you. at the same time. That's right, the Grand Slam and Little mm -hmm. League. So uh, yeah, there are many, many, many examples of just shitty behavior. Well, I will just piggyback on Brian's. I jotted a note down earlier in case you asked us and I feel like Kreskin this is what I wrote earlier due to rampant undiagnosed ADD I would never have been able to find my mask yeah, mm. true. So that would have, been, have lost I, hundreds I was the same I, my, my, I was always getting yelled at by teachers because you'd open my backpack and the papers were loose oh god it wasn't in the trapper keeper mm. everything was a mess i didn't know where anything that's was that's like yeah that's a medical deferral and you're saying i was a <laughs> no, no, no. veteran no 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 i'm saying i would have been in a full state of vomitous panic because mm -hmm. i'd never be able to find it and i'd always be in trouble so but, quite the opposite so but do we have if you i the had rebel? one i would dutifully put it okay. on <laughs> stay out of everybody's way stay off the radar so we got uh, so we, we split the room. I that you would do it, Adam, just because like all the hot girls would be wearing their masks, and you would. How how is that not a priority That's for good you? Good point. Mm, they want to see the bad boy. You mean uh, wow? How would that translate, Chris? Well, you want them to like you. Right? Uh, Nah, I I knew that was off the table. <laughs> <laughs> I had I you know, I had one. To the best of my knowledge, I had one girl that liked me, but. Um, her dad was a shop teacher at oh. uh, my junior high and she liked me in high school and I hated her dad so much <laughs> that I, I couldn't imagine yeah. being on a date with her because yeah, I'd say I have to go home that and I meet get. your horrible dad, Mr. Mallon, mm. who taught plastics class who I hated so much. Wow. She, her dad plastics ruined, I never, I've, never <laughs> told, I've never told her, yeah. but it was like, it was, it was kind of clear that she liked me, yeah. but I was mm. just like, I hate your dad yeah. so much, I, I can't go there. You know what? One thing we didn't bring up, which I maybe... Oh, you never had braces, did you, Adam? No, that would have cost For, something. Yeah, right. Anyone with an erector set in their mouth or fucked up teeth I, would have been only too happy to wear a mask That's every good day. Point. That's a good point. Especially in that seventh grade, eighth grade. Good point. Yeah. All right. Well, revealing and interesting. <laughs> Shall we uh, change it. gears? Let me get up, move the mic around a yeah. little here. Get a game, get, get on balls your feet. Game ready. Mm -hmm. It's time to start the big rants of March Madness Madness. We have 32 red hot rage triggers fighting to be the ultimate topic that ticks Adam off. Some competitors from last year have kept their spots, but some newcomers and underdogs have fought their way into the tournament in 22. Here's our first of three matches today from the California Conference. 
It's Forest Lawn Flower Guys versus Graffiti. Well, I don't like it just because it's emblematic of where we are right now and the way we run this goddamn hellscape called Los Angeles. I was early money on this shit. I've been complaining about this shit for well over a decade. I used to drive from my house, go down Forest Lawn, and I started noticing cop on a motorcycle on one side giving out speeding chicken shit speeding tickets to soccer moms and a bunch of illegals carrying out their business on the other side throwing their trash fast food wrappers flower boxes everywhere no trash can on the other side now who was the government interested in which citizen actually the ones weren't citizens on one side they were interested in the citizens paying their taxes who uh, registered their vehicles lawfully and had a checking account and we're extracting money from them, not the empty bags on the other side of the street. And I said, this is a problem. Well, it's now global. This used to be the only place people sold shit on the street in Los Angeles. Flower guys in front of the cemetery. No longer. We are selling all sorts of fucking food. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, right. Maybe the long layoff. Maybe the right. long layoff, man, a uh, Yeah, I'm not looking. At it. We got a clock. Where's my clock? All right, all right. Well, look, hey, look. If he moves ahead in the bracketing, I'll I'll be able to put a button on that. I'm sorry. Graffiti, graffiti. All right. Again, back to the city. I own a warehouse. Somebody put graffiti on the side of the warehouse. I got a notice from the city of Glendale. You must take care of this post haste, or you'll be hit with a fine. Fine. But now let me. Let me propose Exhibit B. Every freeway, on-ramp, over-ramp, ramp up, every fucking open thing, everything that Glendale owns is covered with fucking graffiti. If you own something in Glendale, then you must fix it at the end of a gun or they will shut your shit down, but not their shit. And I'm asking Glendale, graffiti, good or bad? If we all agree it's bad, and that's why I'm going to be hit with the big fucking levy if I don't take care of my shit in a timely manner, then how about you make your own fucking bed and also the people that are out there doing the graffiti fine you're in a gang you want to spread the word what's with the one where you take the fucking drywall screw and carve it into a toilet seat at the hospital my dad's dying at I have to get a sip of water uh, here. Take a, take a break. Tina and I will discuss well, I gotta it. I got to dab my brow. Yeah, has been made clear. We'll decide what goes on to That's the next exactly round. That's exactly right. I got to be honest. I feel like uh, the underdog graffiti came in a little more fire in their belly, a little more prepared. You know, they got a good night's sleep as a team. <laughs> I totally agree. I think that graffiti is something that it, it, we all see it. We're all de- we're all dealing with it. And you're right. When somebody's having a, a heart attack and you're worried your dad's going to die, why do I have to go look at a fucked up toilet? Ugh. Well done. God. Graffiti. Graffiti all moves right. on. All right. Our second SmackDown. From the Pop Culture Conference, it's the battle of blowhard athletes. Ooh. LeBron James versus... Colin Kaepernick. LeBron James. LeBron James, you are a tastemaker. You are an influencer. You've captured the imagination of every fucking 13-year-old boy on the planet. Nobody is more revered and more respected than you. And yet you have to explain you're scared to leave the house because of racism. Or every time there's a cop shooting, it's because the black person has a target on their back. Even the fucking cop who shot the black chick was about to plunge a steak knife into the other black chick. You had to find racism in that. You are poisoning people with this kind of talk. And by the way, all you do is get Netflix deals and pay billions of dollars by Whitey. So what's the fucking huge beef. By the way, that commercial for Bitcoin where you go talk to the young version of yourself, tell them not to be a pompous douche who never stops talking about racism. That's what I want to see in that commercial. Sit down with a 17-year-old version of yourself and go, don't be a pompous, race-hustling douchebag. Instead, be a happy billionaire. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Oh, hold on. I need to I was say. Give him in a second. I didn't, I'm not, I'm not in playing shape. I'm this fucking, I went all Allen Iverson on everyone's ass. You practice. You too much in the conference tournament. <laughs> practice? What do you need to practice for? Walked right out onto the hardwood and I fucking lost my mojo, man. All right, what? Oh, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Oh, or as I like to call him, Malcolm XXL. 
Look at a picture of that guy. Looked like a Syrian cab driver his first year in the league. Then all of a sudden the hair shoots out 40 feet and a fucking black leather and the black turtleneck comes on. I don't trust anyone that completely tries to change their look and their vibe, especially when they're hammering checks for it. Sorry, Gargos. The guy's a douchebag. And also the fucking commercial that we're running for young Colin on Netflix or whatever that is. And they're showing, oh, the NFL combo. And it just morphs right into the slave auction. So you're quaint. First off, why are you trying to get back into the slave auction? If they had the actual combine, you're trying to get back into the league, the racist league. You're hustling to get back into that league. But also, I ask you this. There may be some similarities, but I've said it once and I'll say it again. When a slave tears an ACL, you think they're frantically rehabbing to get back in the field? I don't think so. I think they nurse it for a couple of seasons. Wow. Biggest their choice. Harrowing. Yeah. I was going to say, the bringing in of the LeBron commercial was inspired. Yeah. Now, then he brought in the Kaepernick commercial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know where to go with this. I, my, I, I thought we were a lock when he called LeBron a race hustling douche. Mm-hmm. But then, when you put your friendship with Mark Garrigus on the line to state yeah. your truth, I'm into it. This is too close to call for me. Do you have a preference I here? I don't think we tip toward Kaepernick. Okay, Kaepernick it is. Yeah. Kaepernick moves on. All right. And now, in our last match of the day, from the big government content conference, a three-letter throwdown. It's AOC versus CDC Director Rochelle Walensky. Oh, boy. Oh, AOC. Oh, I got some panties in the bunch by pointing out the obvious that if she was 60 and fat, no one would listen to a word that came out of that bitch's mouth. Jesus Christ. First off, she was surprised because she'd never seen a garbage disposal before. She was she got to the age of 33 before she'd ever even heard of a garbage disposal. And by the way, she's lying. That was definitely in the fucking apartment she grew up in with her parents or the home she grew up in, in, in with her parents as well. The point is this. She's got an agenda. You think the agenda is a green agenda. You think agenda is wealth. You think it's poverty. Getting rid of poverty. You think the agenda is lifting up the middle class. Her agenda is her. That's her fucking agenda. You want to know what your agenda is, AOC? Go find a fucking mirror or a still body of water because that is your agenda. It is you. Gas, seven bucks a gallon. Ha! Let them drink cake is what I say to that. Rochelle Walensky. Well, she's worried as a mother. She's got a feeling. Hey, superstitious gypsy bitch. I don't give a fuck if you're a mother. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I want to see some data come out of your fucking office. Oh, by the way, some data did come out of the office. Children, adolescent deaths from COVID underreported. Oh, overreported. Well overreported by 24%. So the kids that we thought had died, well, it turns out a lot less of them died. And by the way, they all had pre existing conditions. Scare the fucking kids, get them in the fucking crate, get dumb, superstitious gypsy mom into the crate with the fucking kids and the mask. You gotta wear the mask. You gotta wear the mask. It's a fucking religious symbol at this point. And why don't you just fuck it? It'd be like me, angry people. Hey, what are you doing with those rosary beads in your pocket? I'm rubbing them. So be Beelzebub doesn't lift me up and take me and drop me in a volcano. Listen, bitch, let's get someone who knows what they're doing to take your fucking job. Yeah, you oh, need to sit down. I need to yeah. sit down. Okay. Drink off that tall glass of water. This rayon is smelling. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, thoughts? I, th- I think it's clear to everyone the second rant was much more robust. Mm-hmm. That said, was it more of a mask rant and less of a Rachel Walensky mm. rant? Interesting. Um, yeah, I liked the pulling, the deep pull of Narcissus and the still body of water. <laughs> that was a real standout for me. We're going way back on But that I got to say, the, the data and the stats that he just threw in so casually, very impressive. Okay, this is a tough gotta, one. Now we got to dig deeper. Okay. Will, will this come up again? On Will there be a mask rate? Will there be mm. a mandate rate? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, where do I, we go from here? We can't know that for well, sure. Well, he may, he may go to the, the, the monologue she did about his her son at summer camp. I'd like to see that. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see something on AOC's lipstick. Oh, I'm talking lipstick. about different topics altogether. Oh, I will, they, see. will they bleed into, you know, oh, will there be a yeah, t- entry into this I like where your head's at. This was more about the CDC than Rachel herself. I say we go AOC. AOC it is. All right. 
Check your brackets at AdamCarolla.com and tune in tomorrow for more March Madness Madness. All right, we have the host of Guys We Fucked podcast. It's also a stand-up special as well. And uh, that'd be uh, Kareen Fisher, if I'm saying that. I hope I'm getting this right. Christina Hutchinson. Um, They're supposed to be here, but they're not here yet. So maybe we'll talk about some things and buy a little time and see when they come uh, pulling up. Talk about more shitty behavior from me in middle school. Yeah. (laughs) I'd love to hear it. There's a lot. <laughs> I love I love shitty behavior stories. But with girls, I don't know if this is like you, Brian, because we I think we have similar deficiencies when it comes to mm-hmm. ADD. I was just separated a lot. I was just told to like mo- drag my desk to the corner Mine a lot. Mine revolves all around outbursts and yeah. what you would call popping off. Back right. In the day. Okay. Popping off. Like, yeah. Remember popping off? That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> but were you specifically trying to like impress anyone or you just couldn't keep your mouth shut? A little bit of both. I think yeah. I was trying to be funny, but yeah. totally ham handedly. Like, how <laughs> how was uh, how was your batting average of popping off? Could you bust up the class? I was I was, I was a volume shooter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went for uh, I went for sheer volume and it, it worked. So there were a couple of times where I got some good laughs, but uh, uh no, it, it was mostly just disruptive. I look back and I cringe. It was it was such fun to be self evaluative. <laughs> it was such a fertile soil for popping off. You yeah. know, you had this teacher, was always silent, you had an audience. Yeah. And they were bored and they wanted, you know, they wanted some disruption. You know. So I thought. I just think I just had this thought. I've never had it before, but I think there's something wrong with their strategy, which is they would constantly put the shit students, the shit students would sit in the back. Right. That's where I would sit. Yeah. I sat in the back of the room, and the good, studious ones would sit right up front. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Should flip that. You are much less likely to pop off in the front. Yeah. Because your audience is behind you, mm-hmm. and the teacher's in front of you. Right. I bet if you, I bet you could have. Cut me and Brian's popping off sixty-one percent if you put me put up front, because the pop I would have had to turn. Yeah. I had. The entire class in front of me, mm-hmm. and, and the teacher was as far away as they could get from me, and I felt safe popping off. Yeah, that sounds about good right. Point. Yeah, my biggest pop offs came from the back row. From the back row. Yeah, those the are all the big and all totally the popping and often <laughs> takes place. See, I did. I'm a one and done because I danced my whole life until you know a couple of these, and uh, I was always doing that in dance class until. Finally, she had enough. I'll never forget it. We were learning a dance to Adam Ant's Goody Two Shoes. Oh boy! And it it's was yeah, and it was like kind of like hard and a little a little extra. And I was trying to be like the cool person. I go, "Do you actually expect us to learn that?" And I'll never forget. She turned around with tears in her eyes, like choking back, quivering. She goes, "You know what I expect." I expect you to keep your little mouth shut. Oh my! Because I worked really hard on this, oh and no. I have been wor- and I was so fucking humiliated. I never did it again. I don't want to be a one upper to Brian's uh, story about the answering machine, but I don't know uh, how you could. let's not forget that uh, Henner Tyers mm-hmm. there was a kid who sat next to me, who was a decent student. Tyers kid. I was a. I don't. I must have been. He was a. He was a drummer. Remember his family of drumming. I. I. I think if you put Henner Tyer in, he probably one. ended up in some band or something. I remember he had a house. It was up in the hills. Like we we're kind of friends. And uh, his parents, you know, their parent-teacher conference did not involve their son. It involved me. Oh, what? I was like, your, oh. your son needs to get away from that guy. Oh, that so guy's, you're a lost cause. That guy's so fucking him. dumb that he's spilling <laughs> into your. He's a black <laughs> hole of knowledge. Yeah. He's sucking all the knowledge out of your son's head. Like that is a. That's not big. many get warned about others Other people's. at the wow. at the parent teacher, but uh, I was uh, considered a, a no fly zone. Did your parents ever attend a parent teacher conference? They must have had to. How would that. Uh, There'd be a lot of how would I know that? Yeah, they, that's right. It was a, a tacit agreement between me and my parents and the faculty, which is my dad and mom certainly didn't want to burn the calories of you know going in right. there. Plus, um, what 
what information is going to be shared with them? They, they've seen the report yeah. cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, I mean, who the fuck wants to go in yeah. there and talk about what a colossal shit show your kid it's is shaming. classically? And then, hey, you guys, yeah. uh, where? what about the homework? Or like, if you got the guy a tutor oh. or something? So who the hell want, want to go in there and I do that? that? I, uh, my mom had to come in and get me out of uh, detention pre donkey squad, but this was the um, in the sixth grade of uh, Colfax Elementary. Mm, mm-hmm. um, there was a middle aged woman named Lee, and Lee was probably you know had the cat glasses, mm-hmm. and she was right out of the fifties, right? But the, the kind of sp- slacks they would wear and the windbreaker Central she, casting for short right. hair right. she she reminded me of my aunt pat you know just just a <laughs> relic from the from the 50s and she was the noon monitor you know and and she would just walk around and just just give everyone hell she was just like that one like yeah, yeah listen young man you march yourself in there with your dungarees mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. you know she's just like she was from the 50s mm-hmm. and this is like North Hollywood in the seventies, you know, but she brought her fucking great Santino mentality <laughs> right to the seventies schoolyard. And we were running around playing, playing smear the ass. queer and grab ass <laughs> beating on each other and doing shit. And she was like constantly coming like no food. No, the cafe, it stays in the cafeteria. You're in trouble. Go, get on that bench. She would bench you, you oh, know, yeah, benched. You'd, yeah. you'd, you'd grab a piece of food and you'd want to go out and play kickball or something. She'd see you eating. And she was, she was up everyone's ass the entire time. So when we got to graduation on the on sixth grade graduation, me and about two or three other friends, one uh, Chris, not that Chris, uh, Chris had uh, stole my unicycle and then mm. died when he was like, I don't know, 24 or something. And then, sure, then, uh, then like a few other Bobby Wilhall or something like that. There's like three or four of us. And we're like, we're never going to see Lee again. Uh-oh. And then we were like, God, she was such a bitch. God, she fucking tortured us for years, you know, but we're never going to see her again. And then we had this mindset, which is, wait a minute, we're never coming back here again. And what can they really do to us? Yeah. Like it is, you know, it's June and we just graduated and we're going Summer to a time. different place yeah, and Lee's not going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So we raped her. And go on. Sorry, what'd you say? No, I've heard so, the story before. We just like walked up to her and she was like walking around, you know, and they're like, hey, Lee, kiss my behind, you know? And she was like, uh, yeah, okay, get out of here, you know, whatever. But it kind of it kept escalating. Of course. And it just kept, and, and at some point it was like, you're fucking bitch, Lee. Like, fuck you. And she was like, all right, now you're fucked. Now you're she, far. Was, she was pissed off. And um, she, uh, at, at a certain point when it really got raucous with the language and it got really, we just kept going and I think we were egging each other on or whatever, uh, she hauled us all into the office at graduation. Everyone else was eating cake somewhere and sure we were all just sitting in the office. Just had to get your pound of flesh. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow my mom and her hippie friend, Pat, Ended up showing up probably stoned, you know, at, at like, you know, one in the afternoon <laughs> had to like come bail me out or something. That, 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 that's, my, that's my recollection of uh, Lee. And uh, speaking of that, Gina, things that would never fly. Yeah. And uh, in the titty department. Sure. There was a noon aide who must have been. Was like a, I, she must have been like a high school senior that had whatever work work release release points <laughs> yeah. or something yeah, like something she would new. end up at yeah. the school. She's just a, a nice little girl, a woman. I don't know. She was young. I, she could have been 18, 17. I, we don't, I don't know what she was. She was old to us because right. we were 10 or 11 or something. But she had a huge rack on mm-hmm. her. And every time we saw her, we just went, 
Ba 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 ba. Put our hands out <laughs> front. I'm sure she That's fucking went home and cut on her inner thigh. There's like nothing, <laughs> nothing she could do about it. And, and it was probably a thing too, where like she was self conscious, yeah, sure. and then her mom was going, "Oh, no one notices. Yeah. Nobody cares." But every time we started, ba 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 ba. You're at the perfect age for oh, that because there's God. nothing more terrifying than boys that are like 10 to 12 years old. Mm. I'm still scared of them. Mm. How, first off, where would we, we, we'd still oh. be in a gulag yes. right now if you tried that shit today. You would be in, an, in a real legitimate trial in a courtroom. She I, the, she never said, you know, she just a look at us or yep. roll her eyes. Yep. I, she never reported anything, never like told us anything. Wow. It was just ba 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 <laughs> why that was our thing it's with our so hands out in front of our face. Stupid. And I uh, feel horrible because she, I, I, we thought she was a, a woman. Right. She, she was probably 17 yeah. or something and feeling very self conscious. Oh. Anyway. Feel that for her. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. We'll take ourselves a break. And uh, Corrine and uh, Christina are running a little bit late, but we'll, uh, we'll usher them in right after this. Now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. A 58-year-old woman was arrested after allegedly beating her ex-boyfriend with his own prosthetic leg. Definitely Not a Jew! Well, we found out that Henner Tair plays drums in a train-themed band for kids. What does that mean? Probably works steadily. <gasps> wow, Depot Day. He's local at the Travel Town Museum. He, well, maybe he should have sat a little closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I bet his parents are proud. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's cashing a check as a musician. He's got a, a drum kit that's shaped like a choo choo train. Yeah, that's cute. And he rolls, I guess he rolls and plays. Is it is it move? It looks mobile. I didn't train themed band for kids. <laughs> plays drums in a train themed band for kids. Yeah, it, they have stuff on Spotify. They have like original stuff. They do? It looks like, oh, yeah, but it's all it it's all train themed and uh Is it covers and made it, to sound like train songs? No, uh, not the band train. No, no, no. But okay. I mean, no, they incorporate yeah. train theme yeah. oh, into yeah. real I mean, look songs. Yeah, they're called the conductors. They oh, I know. I know, some, train I know some of their streets. songs. <laughs> Don't sit too close to a moron. <laughs> You'll end up playing the drums on a cart. <laughs> travel town. You guys ever get out to travel town? We do. Oh, we I'm take sure the kid we often. Yeah. Another big move for me in the rebellious <laughs> department is travel town had a couple of old retired uh, jet fighters. Oh, I don't know if they're there they anymore. They are not. But they had a couple, you know, Lockheed was up the street mm -hmm. and they gave them a couple shells of an F-111 or something. They had a couple that were up there. Cool. But they had a fence, a big high fence around like them. They didn't it. want people monkeying with right. those airplanes. You could get up on the train and walk through yeah, the caboose and stuff like that, but the aircraft, different story. Oh, there it is, an old picture. Oh, what do we got? Hold on a second. Uh, we, driving on we went right over that fence. I would always go over the fence and crawled up the exhaust of the plane because they had the engine was out. Oh Hence God. why the fence was there. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the fence. Called right up the back end of that thing and got into the cockpit. Yeah, I can Hell see that. The, yeah. Well, how could you not? The numbers right on it is 420. That's right. That's good. We got the, uh, what's up? We got some. Oh. Real train songs. Hey, Chris. Can't Not that bad. Yeah. Everybody. Good, good drumming. Sounds like I want candy. This guy's Bo, Bo Diddley beat. Yeah. Now, is Don't Henner singing or is he just playing it? No, he's not the singer. He's just a drummer. Yeah. No, he spent too much time next to you, so he's not smart <laughs> enough to drum. Remember the lyrics. <laughs> what other train songs for children are there? 
Is there a Casey Jones something? Probably. Yeah, you can't you can't do Johnny Cash. I no. hear the train of coming. No. Yeah, I would expect more of a train beat. You know, yeah. a little more Johnny Cash yeah, style. Yeah, steady. He's, he's going away from the train a little bit. So I guess they can book him for parties and events and do stuff like that. Locomotion's got to be a, a oh, closer. Yes. Mm-hmm. A <laughs> closer. Yes. There's a. Uh, <laughs> Hey, yeah, there's uh, The Clash, Train in Vain, I think. There's a train song by The Clash. I don't that know if they're true. talking about trains. Uh, the aircrafts were transferred in the 80s and 90s, so they yeah, got rid of the, the Travel Town. Uh, but Travel Town was the place no one had any money, so if one of your cheap friends had a birthday party, you just yep. end up there. Sure, sure. And it was like, it was, a, it was a step up from going to the park, but it didn't cost anything for the parents. They didn't yeah. have to rent out a Chuck E. Cheese or anything. You just go Not to Travel Town yeah. and look at the, I, I went to a couple, I went to a couple birthday parties there when I was nine that years old. That surprise me. Yeah. And I, I have a weird, crazy recollection of something that was burned into my psyche over there. So it was like some kid you know, when you go to a kid's birthday party, and there's a couple of rando kids who are like, I don't ever know him, yeah, but you I'm know friends. him, but yep, I know him, yep. but how? what are we doing here? And this kid is like a couple of years younger than me, and I've not had this thought in 40 years, but he, he cut his finger a little at something, and it, w- it was bleeding, and he, he kept looking at me, and he went, blood, blood! And I was like, <laughs> look at his finger going, I, I don't even know you, dude. And he's like, blood! I was like nine, and he was seven, and he just kept going, blood, and it just fucking burned in my wow. psyche. That's why you can't... You don't fuck with people. You know what I mean? Certain shit blood. gets... It, it sucks. <laughs> it gets stuck. Yeah. It's in there now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in there with the Cal Worthington theme right. song and, and all Cal. the other shit I don't want in there. It's just yeah. there. People don't forget. He just kept yelling blood and he kept holding his finger up. And he wasn't... He wasn't crying. He was just had some sort of obsession with it. Uh, and I, mean, it, I never sounds thought. Sounds like a seven-year-old boy. Probably a serial killer. I haven't thought about it in a million years. Uh, all right. Uh, in the keto department, oh. um, I'll tell you something. It's all everyone's always, we're, we're trying to do the cauliflower, the cauliflower, the cauliflower, swapping out mm-hmm. everything with the cauliflower. But do not forget about the cabbage. Do tell. Olga made a stuffed cabbage roll. Oh. Took big leaves of cabbage. It was like ground beef, chopped up a lot of garlic and onion and all sorts of good wrap. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in there, wrapped it up tight, right. the size of a, tam- a smallish that's, tamale. That's called something, right? Cabbage rolls. Oh, I put, thought it was called like a, 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 a put a, Hungarian. It is. A, yeah. Well, it's like cabbage rolls are great, but they normally have rice in them. Yeah. It's just all like the domas, stuff sort yeah. of minus the ricey yeah. part. And then nice. put the tomato sauce over the top and put the cheese over the top and put it in the oven and then good. did the sour cream. Ooh. Fucking Zing. delectable and delightful. And no, I'm kind of missing. I wish we had the corn or the, what, mm-hmm. not not missing it. That sounds great. Good. Yeah. Do the cabbage thing. I got uh, pulled chicken in the slow cooker right now. Oh. Not a euphemism. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I got to tell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have to tell you, nothing brings, and I never thought I'd be someone to say this. Now that I have a little kid and a husband in the house, I always say, like, well, I, I wrap it up. I got to get home. I got to go to the grocery store to cook dinner for the boys. And I love it. Uh, nothing makes me happier than if Andy's done working and they're on the couch playing, you know, Mario Kart and I'm in there rattling the pots and pans. That's the way I like it. Well, good. And uh, the slow cooker. Again, I, can, work for I know where you're from. If you mm-hmm. tell me you're all about a slow cooker, yep. you're not from Van Nuys nope. or Sherman Oaks. You're from the Midwest somewhere, and you've come here, yes. and you've packed your slow cooker. Yes. I will say more people ought to use a slow cooker because it's awesome. Set it and forget it. Also, let's not forget uh, the foreplay of the slow cooker, which is if you order a bunch of shit from Grubhub – at some point, some scary dude's just going to show up at your door, mm-hmm. and you'll have it. Mm-hmm. Slow cookers, a lot of foreplay there, because you that stuff will start permeating mm-hmm. the scent of the mm-hmm. house it three hours yes. before it's time. A come yes. hither scent. Yes, yes, exactly. And then it's it's a lot of kissing yeah. on the neck and sweet nothings, <laughs> because then you'll go to the you'll go to it. 
the siren song yep. will, will draw little, you little to foot it. Rub. It's yeah. true. And you'll it's go true. to it and you'll go, what do we have? They'll yeah. go, about, about another hour. Oh. And go, it smells oh, good. I'm just going to sit here I'm and go stroke my them. meat yep. over here. My fingers. <laughs> That's right. And it's such mm-hmm. it's such anticipation. Yep. Chili, Swedish meatballs. And, and it just fucking gets hold of you. Right. At some point, you go over there, lift the lid off, and pull like a little sliver of the beef off there, yeah. something like that. You get a little, yep. just just moisten. Oh. Just a little moistness <laughs> since, in the lips. There. Since everything sounds gross, what we're saying mm-hmm. right now, guess what I got at the grocery store yesterday that I can't wait to make this weekend? Hmm. Shaved pork. Mm. That's fucking rad. Yeah, yes. I'm really excited. Little little Korean style. So good. Yeah. Well, All we right. wait for our guests. Are the guests uh, They're oh, wait, pulling we, in we now? Oh. Well, I remember the first two times I ever got thrown out of class. <laughs> we were both in third grade. Mm. Yeah, I was going to a Catholic uh, elementary school, and uh, one time they were explaining how the hierarchy of the Catholic administration works. Like, there's cardinals, there's bishops, and I yell out, hey, that's how you spell my name! And they're like, Brian, get out, get out of class. Oh, and man. That's sad. a seven-year-old or whatever it was, eight-year-old out of class. And then the second time I deserved it more because we we're playing some bingo game, right? Some game to vocabulary, yeah. who fucking knows? And uh, at one point, we had to switch cards to our neighbor. And uh, we switched the cards, and every time something came up that wasn't on my card, I would yell to the guy next, the kid next to me, curse your cards, curse your cards. And about the fourth or fifth time, they threw me out of class. I, uh, I was only officially... It was material. <laughs> I mean, it was not my best stuff. I was only officially suspended stuff. once, but it's because I had my stupid go home for lunch pass because I lived across yeah. the street and uh, I, I left. I didn't have the pass and they're like, well, you can't go without the pass. I was always like, look, either you got it or you don't. Why do you physically have to brandish it? Yeah. I'm on the list. You know, check the office. They go, you leave, you're suspended. And I was like, I'm eating. And I just left and then I came back and was immediately suspended. But Mr. Mr. Tomey, my counselor, the part that I forgot about, I know I've told all these stories before, but that's all rushing into my brain. You would have to fill out your emergency card before you register. That's right. Because I was incapable of doing anything, <laughs> mm-hmm. I could not take the emergency card home, have my parents fill it out, the work addresses and all that shit, <laughs> sign it, and then bring it back. And it would always be registration day, and I didn't have the card filled out. So I filled it out myself. But I filled it out in a very comical way. So, you know, my mom's, you know, where's my mom's workplace? Hollywood and Vine. Right. Oh, the, you know, the, the, you know, she's yeah, a prostitute. Sure. And then my dad, his job description was he's, uh, he works for the FBI. And then when I it really, said number, <laughs> address, I wrote classified. I wrote classified on everything. And then it said my home address was the Ronald McDonald halfway house for like wayward girls or whatever. And then I did it eight months ago and I forgot about it's it. Classic and material. Yeah. Mr. Tomey pulled it out and he just looked at it. And he looked at me and then he looked at it again and he went, did you fill this out? <laughs> and I went, ah, not to the best of my I don't recall. recall. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was clear. Corrine and Christina. Hi. Hi. How are you, Adam? Are you Good. Late? Gina, Brian. Hi Thanks there. Thanks for coming in. Uh, the comedy special, it's a, a debut comedy special. Guys, we fucked our special day, and it's available free on YouTube right now. Oh, yeah. And also the podcast, Guys, We Fucked. Uh, as well. Good to see you guys. Great to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for having us. Are you based in New York City? Mm-hmm. Yes. And out here doing some cool things? Yeah, riding around <laughs> in a convertible. Uh, yeah. Getting wow. sunburn yeah. on the 101. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here. From, the yeah. dream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, is there something cooking with Fox in your show as well? I'm reading here. Yeah. Yeah. We're in development with Fox to write, uh, to do a sitcom. Nice. Oh, yeah. nothing. Yeah. And is it all just based on the success of the podcast? I see yeah. like the origin story. If if these two women who co-host Guys We Fucked weren't podcasters, weren't comedians, and, and they lived were living in, New, in Jersey. New Jersey, who would they be and how would they affect the town that they lived in? But that's good. Good pitch. Wow. Well, Thank I mean, you yeah. so much. Yeah. 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 Every time she says it, I'm like, this is a good show. You got into the zeitgeist. <laughs> yeah. That's that's good. So, yeah. Christina, you were at uh, intern at SNL I was, back yeah. in the day? Yeah. I moved to New York City. I switched schools to intern at SNL. Uh, and after the third interview, failed interview, they accepted <laughs> me. They gave me a pity position, mm-hmm. but I appreciated it. Nice. Did uh, I was just talking to someone about interning the other day, and I thought, it's so important just to physically get into the place. Anyone yep. who knows 
radio, or we all come from radio. Mm -hmm. Radio is all about physically getting into the building. And at some point, the, the person that was driving the van becomes the producer of the morning show exactly. or the, a sidekick talent. Like, you physically have to get there. We, we, we never discussed that. We talk all about, like, the training and certification and all that stuff. But, like, just getting inside that building. Yeah. Interning is – I interned all throughout college. It's how I met Corinne at an internship. Oh, yeah, I was interning true. for her company. Good, good. I, well, yeah, I was like, it wasn't my company. It was. Well, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I owned a company. Kick guys. An ass. No, I wish. I was. Uh, I'm a couple years older. I was an assistant at a, a talent management company. Shout out Liebman Entertainment. Uh, yeah, because I thought I was going to be like Ari from Entourage. That was the dream. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it seems such a bygone era now when you think about all the publicists and agents yeah. and you know the fact that. You know, I don't, I don't, I haven't been in William Morris for a long time, but they had a 17 story building right off of Wilshire and Beverly Hills. Like it, you don't, do we physically even need any of that stuff anymore? <sighs> yeah. The <laughs> pandemic has changed everything. everything we're, our, our agents have been working from home since, right? Since it started. I don't think the offices I, have opened up. CAA did reopen. Cause I saw it on, I saw it on Instagram, oh, um, cute. but I also haven't been there personally, but yeah, they were out for like a year at least. Yeah. So, but isn't it harder to take your agent seriously when they're like in their jam jams petting their cat? Yeah. Eh, every Zoom meeting I've ever been on, I'm doing way worse. So yeah, for I'm sure, like, for yeah. sure. We know they're humans. You know, yeah, it's not like yeah. it's your parents where they feel godly for the first couple years of your life. When someone zooms in from their bedroom, I'm like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> no. That's At least go to the personal. kitchen table. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. you guys, you hooked up. It's been over. Has it been a decade? Eight years. Almost. Almost yeah. a decade. And stand up. Where did that begin? Uh, that began uh, my internship. Uh, it was the my last semester of college, and at the very last episode, I asked one of the writers. I like got the guts up to ask one of the writers what I had to do to get on the show, and he was an improv guy, but he said stand up, and I was like, damn it! I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I did. I did. I got into it. My first ever. I didn't do a mic because I didn't know about them. I did a bringer show. Mm. I begged my friends to pay twenty dollars cover and a two drink minimum, and Corinne was one of those friends. Hello. How much time did you do? Five. It was so bad. Type bad. It was. It. I gotta say, it wasn't bad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I was a stand-up bit fan at the time, and I was taking classes at UCB, and it wasn't bad because I was like, that makes me look bad. I was like, I reached out to Christina and after that show, and I was like, we need to work together. I think there's a difference between like a like nailing your first stand-up from a stand-up perspective or seeing someone do five minutes and be like, they fucking have something, you know, cause I was in the, I was in the business of potential, of, yeah. of potential, yeah. exactly of management. And I really feel like I saw a lot of people and I feel like my, my, my like sight is good on people. And I was like, we need to work together. Corinne's the only person that if we meet, we've met a lot of people together. We've been working so close for so long. She'll call people out as being pieces of trash. And I'm like, <sighs> really? Are you sure? She's like, nope, I have a feeling. It's mm -hmm. a hundred percent track record. What is it's a supercomputer. Yeah, one hundred percent. You you can I don't know, it's like an innate thing you can tell. And I'm not talking about like calling people out like pieces of trash as in cancel culture. I'm talking I'm talking about me just having this witch this witch knowledge that they are a bad person. This yeah. Dead zone thing where what you, you touch them and you know the bad things. What do you think of done. Gina? Oh God, <laughs> she's crazy. Honest, oh, God. No. She doesn't look like she's no one in here gives me bad vibes. For honestly, I think part of it is just be, having been raised in a healthy house, and that's. Yeah. I thought a lot of people were raised in a healthy environment. No, you're the one. Out, yeah, yeah, no one was, yeah. and I think so. That just gives you a more accurate read of who people really are, and that's it. That's simple. Well, and also you. You luckily know what boundaries are instinctually and how yeah. people are supposed to be treated. Sure. Where the rest of us are like, I guess that's love. Thank yeah. God you know. one of us knows. <laughs> yeah, no, that's Thank very God. accurate. And I, I learned a lot. I didn't realize that most people don't just love themselves <laughs> as the first option until I was like 30. And so I was walking around and I things people would say never resonated with me and I felt like when I spoke people looked at me like I was an alien or doubt or thought it was some kind of performance and I'm like what's going on here why don't I relate to anybody this can't be possible but that's what it was wow what was so healthy about your house 
Just right. It's, it's, it was really, really regular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just nothing, nothing special was going on, which I think is great. No, no hugely memorable stories or <laughs> events, like good was, or bad. Yeah, a lot of laughing, uh, a lot of encouragement. Uh, we're getting to school on time. We're getting good grades. I mean, not not perfect, and you know, very middle class suburbs. My dad owned a baseball card store. My mom was a teacher. Wow. Have a brought uh, the classic. ultimate catch. Lion, yeah. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. it, there's. There's been a kind of war on normal. People <laughs> You're right. fucking forget how good normal no. is. This country used to be really normal, and it was pretty good. Like we've, there's something about the, that convention that we just fucking attacked. I think, I think it frankly was normal people seem to enjoy their lives. Yeah, and the abnormal people are fucking miserable, mm-hmm. and it sort of became religious, and that religious people are like deeply or depending on what your religion is. But there's a lot of like, you guys are sinners, you're fucked, we're gonna go to the mountain, the rapture's happening this weekend, and you guys are all fucked, and then they go up to the mountain, and nothing happens. And then they come back down, and they look at the people barbecuing and enjoying themselves. And at some point, they go, ah, fuck it, let's steal his barbecue and call him an (laughs) asshole. Like, it's like they... Miserable people hate happy people and they hate normal people. And this country is so weird that normal is considered like it's 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 endangered species now. No one wants to be normal or it's a pejorative, like you're boring right. or something like that. Normal's about the that's the best state to go through life yeah. in. Get yourself to zero. <laughs> that's right. I definitely feel boring a lot, especially being a comedian because because of that. It's very weird. I, I like people will invite me on their podcast and I go, I don't really have anything. You're gonna you're gonna be falling asleep. I don't have anything to talk about. No major like traumas or anything. Uh-oh. But I'm I, I don't I'm not I'm not yearning for it. I do feel sometimes like I need to. And I recently got out of this like apologize for not having had a bad childhood. But mm. I talk. No, myself we need out of that. you around. My yeah. God, <laughs> we need more people who are normal. Yeah. To lift their voices up. Yeah, it's like a weird sur- like version of survivor's guilt, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, well, I mean, everyone is trying to like retroactively inject some trauma into their past. Like we were, we were, you know, everyone, it's, it's know. true. We've trained everyone, you know, it's like, I, I have a lot of black friends. Just, you know, <laughs> you never met any of them. Like right, we have this right. thing, I, we, we, we lower, middle, lower, you know, we it's, struggle. it's always <laughs> funny when they're, when they're pitching it, you know, yeah. and, and it, the thing is they can't keep track of their own story. Like we we're very middle class, very blue collar. Anyway, my first year abroad in France, when I was studying the cello, it's, it's like, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you get from, Joe six back right. to France when you were 19 and but we're trying to tamp it down and I would argue uh, let's celebrate normal oh, a little yes. you're right no it's I, I I saw the same thing happening in stand-up and I was like I don't I think it takes away from other people's experiences that are, were truly traumatic if I pretend to dig into some trauma that I don't feel exists in any way so I actually just lean the hard the other direction and and I have jokes about having a nice childhood and how no one wants to listen you know to your band if your parents are still together right. that kind of a thing um, I just yeah I just want to I like to be honest even if it is considered boring so whatever <laughs> christina what about you family i got i got one <laughs> abnormal uh-huh yeah, yeah, yeah or or oh well normal according to the majority but uh yeah a lot of depression a lot of uh undi- undiagnosed things and not any communication about it so i just kind of grew up i grew up i was in uh, in flea markets a lot <laughs> Just in weird environments, uh, yeah. And then my family, my mom was mentally ill, and uh, we never talked about it. So mm. I was just like, you know, I internalized it, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can help her. You mm-hmm. know, maybe I can do something to cheer her up at like four or five, six years old. So my childhood, I was carrying a lot on my shoulders. Do you think that's where the comedy comes from? Sort Absolutely, of yeah. Performing, trying to get your mom out of her head. Yeah, because when you don't know what mom you're gonna get. Mm. And she comes downstairs, and you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, please be the nice one and not oh. the mean one." Um, you want it, you yeah, you you be, get performative very quickly when she's not in a good mood. 
Well, you had a second story. At least that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's in your house. At least there's some stairs to come down. <laughs> that sounds a lot like uh, the Robin Williams story that we're, now we're kind of just hearing, or I'm just hearing, but that's where he said he got it. He was raised kind of a, a combination, really upper middle class in like a castle in Michigan, Whoa. but oh, yeah. super fucking lonely. And mom, like kind of maybe not, always, like you said, not knowing which one you're going to get and always perform for her. And that's where that big boisterous yeah. personality came from. And um, my mom milked it too. She used to tell <laughs> me she was always she always had sh- uh, sore shoulders as a kid and I would massage them and she would tell me that the longer I massaged her shoulders the longer she would live oh my god oh. wow and I bought that shit wow. so I was like my mom's life is in my hand <laughs> literally <laughs> I'm coming to save the day god it's scary parents first off it's insane that there's as much range as there is you, you know what I mean <laughs> you're telling I, me I, you think polar bears work that way like oh that's the alcoholic lazy depressed mama polar bear over there and then Ooh. there's the energetic polar bear mama right. like it's weird that there's the just same person. chasm. Yeah, yeah. Human, same person sometimes. human childhood is very can be very tumultuous, and it's so funny that we're the only species of animal that have a childhood that lasts 18 years. That's a long ass. A fawn comes out and starts walking right away. Like we're just so dependent oh, on the parents. I got guys I went to high school with that are that adolescent childhood is getting into their early 50s. Now. Oh, yeah. Like oh, shit. It's, they're well past it. I know yeah. some dudes that. We know some comedians, probably. Oh, I've dated I mean, a lot of comedians. people who are still in childhood. Yeah. Like, by those standards, I'm considered a, a sex offender. So, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many male... I know a ton of male comedians are, like, in their 50s. Yeah. Like, he doesn't drive. He doesn't have kids. He's not married. You know, he wants to... He likes watching... Um, Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. It's like this is adolescence, people. I I don't know how else you define. It. Now, the good news is, is I guess the one thing that makes them an adult is they drink a lot. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> they're eating fucking fast food and watching, you know, daytime, watching cinema during the day, and you know, hanging out. Like it is strong opinions on the Avengers. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is an adolescence yeah. that is stretched. And I I think comedians, male comedians especially. It's kind of interesting. Maybe the feel, female comedians, maybe they have to grow up faster because of the, the environment. The male comedians, yeah. they're just hanging out. They're kids for life. What, what kids percent, for life. What percentage of the titular guys we fucked are comedians? Like, how, how many of your background dating history is comics? A uh, lot for me. Like just nine. two for me because I was with one person for seven years. So, and it Comic? Was a, no, <laughs> no, no. I wish. You guys ever fucked Jeff Ross? <laughs> How, did he tell you? He said something. Oh, what did he say? He wouldn't tell me which good? one. Uh, <laughs> well. I've never fucked anyone famous, so or even with a career that you might think take, would take off. Oh, <laughs> wow. It's her specialty. And you wanted to be an agent? <laughs> Zero potential. Listen, her listen. vagina isn't a good booker, no. but her mind is. Yeah, like no, knowing who's going to make it and then deciding who you want to have sex with her. Two, two different. very different skill sets. Yeah, they're two That's different pins. And how, how, how is your uh, divining rod worked for you in terms of dudes, like avoiding the creepy guys oh. with your gut? With oh, your gut instinct. I mean, I don't date creepy guys, but I date a lot of addicts. Like, I'm obsessed with addicts, and I, I'm not sure why. I think it's maybe like I'm. I, they seem uh, exciting coming from such normalcy. Like, I always think I always think of myself as like the Jane Curtin of the comedy world. Mm-hmm. She was the you know on SNL, and then would everyone else would go out and do cocaine, and she's like went home to her family and went to bed early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and besides the going to bed early, that's definitely me. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have great taste in men, but it's not like I'm surprised when they're not good. I go into it knowing it's going to be bad, um, but just interesting. Yeah. And yeah. I, my track record is works out as such. All right, so uh, bigger deal breaker sexually. Oh, boy. Let's go. <laughs> Adam or Brian. Let's go. <laughs> don't the guy, first date. Got the Uber sticker on the car, so he's doing okay. a little side hustle. But he has a car. Has a car. <laughs> Wait, they're in New York. <laughs> I have That's a, car. a big ticket item. He's got a car. That is a big ticket item. He's got an Uber on it, though. He's an Uber guy. Okay. Wait for it. He's got uh, the plug-in light-up lift. Yeah. <laughs> versus the guy at the keychain with the Ralph's Club card on it, so he's getting his discount when he goes to uh, the, grocery the grocery store. Oh, that's sweet. That's good? Yeah. I mean, both. Neither would be a deal breaker. Neither bad. No. Neither. I probably would go Uber over Uber over Ralph's, but neither bother me. Yeah. yeah but as you, you know, build up some career momentum, big yeah. deals with Fox, 
moving and shaking. You're talking to someone like... whose ex boyfriend has track marks. So I'm just like, <laughs> that's true. I saw him last night. Actually, yeah, we were hanging with him last uh, night. <laughs> there's still a thing in his arm. Uh, <laughs> he has a car and he's frugal. At this, <laughs> at this point, I've never dated anybody. No offense to all the other people who dated. Who's special? So uh, <laughs> I would love to date a guy who's like. special. Special. Do you know what? Like, the ha- yeah, I don't know. Just cares Quirky. about making the world a better yeah. place. Ooh, that's nice. uh, yeah. Has has niche interests. Reads a lot. You know. And so, um, at this point in my life, I wouldn't date either of those people. Yeah. Mm. Good. <laughs> Special Ed. Right. Do you want to like? What would you like? Would you like really into mountain biking or you know? <laughs> nerdy? So I, I'm actually seeing somebody now who's a historian. Ooh, mm. la and la. I like he's so freaking smart. Oh my mm. god! I'm just like, tell me about World War Two. And I just got a globe. I just purchased a globe. It's a good purchase. Mm. Big time. I look is it at a, it. Is it a globe bar? It's an educational globe. <laughs> oh, no, no. Up it's just a straight up educational okay. facts. Do not lean against it. I've seen way too many movies where oh, the yeah. guy <laughs> leaned against it and then <laughs> right. spun and then you're on the deck. And but it has ahead. the textured topography. Yes. That's Sweet. a good one. Oh, that's it's a nice awesome. Globe. And it's, I stare at it all day and I'm just like, man, I didn't know half this shit was here. <laughs> what does a professional historian do? By the way, never get a dream catcher because you'll never get out of bed. You're just mesmerized all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, talk about inner child. That's <laughs> mine's will never go away. Uh, um, would, would, what does a professional historian do for income? Yeah, he, he works as a professor. He's writing a Uber. biography of a... <laughs> of a <laughs> <laughs> He's writing a book right now, uh, a, a biography of a famous senator, and um, he uh, he works at a, a center for a college, like a New York Center so for History. So we got History. some potential here. Yeah, I like, and he got so many books. Oh my god, he's no, so I'm much not, smart, so much smarter than me. I'm not trying to, you know, drive a wedge between you. But <laughs> I feel like you guys are on the precipice of some real success here, and you Thank know you. what he's doing is limited. Mm. It's noble, it's admirable. Niche. It's admirable, no. but not a ton of financial upside. Like what happens Actually, when you take Hollywood by storm, <laughs> and you know. He's doing pretty well, I gotta say. He's I've seen his apartment. And her voice went up when she said that. No, yeah. he's, I, I was. Yeah, so okay. yeah. No, he seems like he's he seems like he's actually killing it. I have not yeah, been to is. aforementioned apartment, but I heard it described mm-hmm. in detail. It sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. All right. He owns property. He's oh, doing, he's he's a doing really well. Owner. And he's got big visions for himself and his future and where mm-hmm. he wants to take uh, his degree and wh- what he wants to do and how he wants to make the world a better place. Oh, boy. I just All really right. want a guy who wants to make the world a better place, too. So yeah. I'm not the only one in the couple that gives a shit. Mm, yeah. You know, so. Yeah. We wouldn't make a good team. <laughs> no, we would not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do. It's, it's, it is true. Like, I, I think the least attractive thing you can be is like when you say to someone, like, what are you into? And like, I don't know. Like, yes. who are these people? Are they like, they're all like every 19 year old boy I've talked to in the last five years go like, what do you want to do, man? And they go, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, like Instagram. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Fortnite. I once had a college roommate who, t- who told me she didn't really like music. Bro. And I go, I'm, I'm going to tap out here. That's- uh, there, there's a, a group of, We'll call them humans because we're being generous who don't like music. And then they're close cousins, the ones that don't really like food. Oh. And I'm like, who the fuck Fair. are you people? Yeah. Where did this shit? It's like, I'll eat. I just not really, you know. No, not a foodie. No, uh, into I, I got it. I got to admit Uh-oh. something. Oh, no. Uh-oh, with the food. <gasps> I, don't, I don't really give a sh- I mean, I eat it. I got it. Oh, but. my God. Out. Hey, I'm Jewish and I'm a child of trauma. My stomach's fucked up. I can't eat a lot. Oh. I make up for it. I would eat a, a fry off a, a plate that was about to be bust as we're exiting good. a diner. Yeah. Like anything. I <laughs> ate, uh, and it's appropriate for the season, I ate a hamantaschen off of the path train floor. Are you? Just, you know, I used to live in New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> but was it wrapped? No. Just a. Ra- I oh. brought them, but I spilled it. And oh, I was like, these okay. are very expensive. It was yours. It was yours. It was okay. my, I knew where it started, but it was on the path train floor. I love. I was going to waste it. Yeah, you must yeah. have an excellent immune system. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do now. Yeah, that did it. <laughs> All right. Well, Gina's got some news uh, cooking for us. You guys want to hang in and sure. just crack wise and roll with the news? All right. We'll do, do that right after this. News with crack. News with Gino Grad, breaking viral, weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad, stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden, Kamala, big news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. 
Let's talk Arnold Schwarzenegger because he has delivered a message regarding Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, but what note to that, real yeah, quick. We were please. talking yesterday about uh, uh, world leaders who would intimidate and frankly oh, scare. Right. How do we forget about Schwarzenegger? Yeah, the governor. Yeah. The ultimate example. J- J- Jesse Ventura. The body. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. Um, so he tweeted this nine minute video telling Russian people that their government has been lying to them and hiding the truth about what's going on in Ukraine. Um, we're going to watch literally 20 seconds of it. But he says the Russian government's lied to you, not only to the citizens, but to the soldiers. Here's what he says. The Russian government has lied not only to the citizens, but to its soldiers. Some of the soldiers were told they were going to fight Nazis. Some were told that the Ukrainian people would greet them like heroes. And some were told that they were simply going on exercise. They didn't even know that they were going into war. And some were told that they were there to protect ethnic Russians in Ukraine. None of this is true. He also goes on to talk about, you know, how the Russian people have said there are Nazis there and we've got to get the, you know, got to clean that up. And he's like, remember, Zelensky's Jewish. His his family perished in the Holocaust. But he doesn't know who's going to see this. He's just hoping it gets into it's Russia. Sweet office. Yeah. Are really they is. not on to him? I mean, the citizens? I like- think they are. I think the Russia, there's, I've seen a lot of videos of people in Russia going, hey, this sucks and we don't want to be doing this. There's, there's been plenty of protests for sure. They're they've getting, been arrested. Absolutely. Um, I was watching, I don't know if it was CNN or Fox, but um, one of the women there was like, I tried to tell my parents this is happening and they're in Russia and they don't believe it. Oh, so really? I don't know if it's generational. Jeez. I don't know. But like 60% of Russians apparently were, were good with the invasion. That's the, oh, that that's the stats. I, I mean, because I do a news show where we like look at uh, news from both the right and the left so I'm like to try to get some truth in the middle but Amen, girl yeah. <laughs> it just gives me a headache every you. Tuesday honestly uh, but yeah that's what that's what I read and I was surprised because I feel like what's getting into uh, American especially like social media which is where we like to consume so much of our news these days Twitter and Instagram it's all these stories of how uh, a lot of the Russians are against it but I don't know if that's just the news that they think the Americans want to see or if it's the actual truth well I mean 40% will will take it. You know, if 60% right. don't believe it, that's almost half that are like, fuck this. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's still the majority. Right? Also, yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the soldiers aren't Russian. Those oh. are... They're mercenaries? Yeah, they're like, oh. I don't know, Serbian or something. Oh. Like they're, oh. He's Damn. not going to... T- sacrifice right. his right. guys. Sure. He's going to get really? other. Well, I heard also sacrifice. Mm, the birth rate in Russia has been declining so badly that there was speculation that he wanted to do. Vladdy Poots uh, wanted to get this done before no one wanted to be in the army or oh, the, in okay. the military. Mm-hmm. Uh, which wow. was interesting. It's good stuff. I'm like, yeah, no one <laughs> wants to be there. And I was looking at my globe. So glad I got a globe. <laughs> oh yeah, Russia's big country. It's closer to Alaska than I thought. Oh, well, that's like, why oh, she shit. could see her house from I, there. That's what I thought. I'm like, wait, we were making fun of Sarah Palin for being a dum dum, <laughs> but she is about other stuff. But Russia is pretty close to Alaska, yeah, very so close. She could see it from her fucking house, technically. Uh, but Russia's huge, and their population is declining. So I'm like, mm, uh, no one, ain't nobody want to live there anymore. Well, we we've brought this up from time to time. Where the hell is Steven Seagal? Where does he yeah. come down on this? Yeah. <laughs> Defector to Russia. <laughs> oh right, right, yeah. Because he's live. He's, he's a fan. Living. He goes there and does like exhibition karate. Yeah. Tournaments. It's a residency. Yeah. In Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Where is he? At the pump. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't heard anything out of him. I know. It'd he be should... nice. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know who else we're not going to hear from for about 24 more hours? Hmm. Kanye West. Oh, he's got uh, He went too far. He got yeah. too yeah. far. He's been suspended from Instagram for eh, the rest of the day, if you're listening to this now, after his latest tirade, this time accusing um, Kim and Pete Davidson and Trevor Noah and D.L. Hughley and a couple other people. Um, a spokesperson for Meta, who owns Facebook, tells TMZ that Kanye violated Instagram's policies on hate speech, harassment, bullying. Uh, he won't be able to post or comment or DM for a couple of days. Um, the spokesperson said also to TMZ, They'll take uh, additional steps if more violations occur. Did you see the- What did he say about D.L. Hughley? Oh, I, oh a lot of that, stuff. Mm-hmm. And then D.L. Hughley, did you see his tweet? Yeah. The he response. was like, <laughs> how bad is Kanye West that he had Kim go, uh, Kardashian go to a white guy? <laughs> yeah. And he said, That's a pretty sick burn. Like, you yeah, have, like, damn. Kanye has goons that'll go and try and kill me, but no one that'll refill his prescription? Yeah. <laughs> but then I'm like, this is all unfolding. I'm like, now does everybody kind of a little bit, little, little, little bit understands what it's like to have a bipolar parent? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. This is all familiar to me. Okay. I feel I, at home. I'm going to read Trevor Noah's statement. This is why he attacked Trevor Noah. That was deleted quickly. He had a, a racial slur just repeated over and over again. It was the lyrics of Kumbaya, mm-hmm. but it was changed <laughs> from the M to the N. Oh my god! Oh, and just, Coon. yeah. Oh, so that was uh, that was what got him in trouble over there. This Rich is, Banks, listen up. <laughs> oh, His no. creativity is really popping. But this people don't think about it. Well, women do. Men often don't think about this. This is what Trevor Noah said. What we're seeing is one of the most powerful, one of the richest women in the world, unable to get her ex to stop texting her, to stop chasing after her, to yeah. stop harassing her, and it goes on and on from there. But you know, it, it's just like if if the most powerful woman in pop culture can't get this guy to fuck off how the rest of us supposed to be feel safe you know it'd be funny i was talking about that lebron james commercial where he was talking mm-hmm. to the 18 year old version of himself or the 17 year old yep. version of him. um i like to do that with pete davidson <laughs> Oh, I like to find him. It gets better when he was oh, seventeen. Nine, nine, twelve, crying <laughs> oh, over his fucking. Brian, please, oh, yeah. Brian. No, but that. Yeah, I know. Right, that's right. the story. Like he's in Hoboken or something <laughs> yeah. or wherever the. Yeah, fuck. Ho- Hoboken. In Staten Island. <laughs> Staten Island. Oh, Not whatever. Hoboken. Staten Island. Yeah, Staten, Staten Island. <laughs> Staten Island, <laughs> wherever he is, right? Yes. He's sitting there when he was 17, oh, and probably smoking weed, yeah. doing nothing, had some dreams about. He surely knew who Kanye West was mm, and sure. who Kim Kardashian mm-hmm. was. I mean, they were all, I mean, I don't, Pete Davidson is 26. I mean, Sure. Around that, yeah. What is what is he? I mean, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and when he was nineteen, at like the stand, because we were doing shows. Everyone was doing shows with him oh. and stuff because he was on the New York comedy scene, and he yeah. was really great stand up. It was it was he stood out like right away because he was so young and he was really tight with his material. I'll, I'll, I'll put him at seventeen, okay. sitting <sighs> back in Staten Island to to know that this shall now <sighs> be your life, and then. You know, Kanye West gonna be he's gonna put a bounty out on you because your dick's too big. You know what I mean? I mean, you had to just be sitting in his fucking bedroom at his mom's house going, "What? No way! Like, no dude. way!" Sounds like a mad. Lip. Well, I, first thing you do is you just get him really stoned. Yeah, and then you take Done. him to the present day, like right now, and you go, "This is your, this, this is, is what your you life. can look forward to." Yeah, yeah. And by the way, she's like eighth of all the hot chicks you've been with. Mode oh yeah, let's, yeah. Let's let's go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's super into her. We know that now because he didn't get tattooed. He got Kim branded, branded. on his chest. Um, you can kind of see it right there. It says Kim next to the s- laughing skull, mm-hmm. and he has other <laughs> tattoos that are for her. Uh, it, you can't see it in that picture, but Kim said on Ellen the other day that like right like on his collarbone it says "My girlfriend's a lawyer." Mm-hmm. Or, My girl's mm-hmm. a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's committing to the bit for sure. <laughs> In the spirit of guys, we fuck. Good or bad idea to get a tattoo of someone's name on on, on your on yourself. On that your would be person. a bad idea. It's bad, but it's good because it's so bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A fun it's toxic a, love. <laughs> you can they you, their tattoo removal is a thing now. Okay. So now that tattoo removal is a thing, it, it's just a fun toxic thing to do. I it, don't know. I love seeing like the Instagram, like the sucky tattoos where they change them yeah. from the old girlfriend yes. to the flower bed. Right, like Johnny yeah. Depp was famous yeah. for that with yeah. Winona. Damn, that's right. He had Winona. <laughs> yeah, and, and it right? became Wino like wine. Yeah, you know, what? Yeah, Wino forever. Wino yeah. forever. Yeah, ah! <laughs> and he committed also to that bit. Yeah, I. <laughs> I the guys they're guys that are head to toe with tattoos. So what uh, Travis Barker's mm-hmm. the uh-huh. other sisters with like he's got it on the skull yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now I get the kind of rebel bad boy aspect of it, but at a certain point it's become visually bizarre, distracting. Like for a woman, like the guys like literally face and head and yeah. Is it is it attractive? Is it like yeah? It is. Yeah. I love, I've dated a guy almost fully covered in tattoos. And really? I loved it. It's yeah. Like, oh, you're wearing your damage on your skin. Let's go. <laughs> you loved it. I yes. love tattoos. Yeah. How many, I actually don't have any myself, but I love them on other people. Where was I he? Do. Where was the weirdest place he was? Tatted? I mean the the I mean he had full full neck, a rose on the eye, sword on the cheek, like not sword, f- not fully, oh, yeah. not full Death. face, but um a good uh, a good amount on you the face. Dated. Aaron Neville? Yes. <laughs> Didn't Aaron Neville have a sword on his face? That Aaron Neville say. is one of the guys I fucked. You are correct. He, a he did? I, 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 I have... I have a weird memory. I'm of He's usually right about this random stuff. Aaron Neville had a sword I don't know that. 
on his neck, his face, his that cheek. That is an odd fact to know. Wow. Yeah, we had a weird birthmark. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. The Neville well, brothers. Whatever, yeah. He had a distract from it, and then yeah. you get the sword on the cheek. And he may, well, you let Chris, Chris will look for it. And see oh, my God. Oh, it's on his cheek. That's, a, that's rough stuff. It almost supports looking at He's the mole. He's got a sword yeah. on his cheek. I'm too hip for this goddamn room. Really no one got my Aaron Neville <laughs> no, reference. Nobody. That's, I mean, that is pronounced. That's like oh, Mike that's Tyson. A big one. Yeah. Is that a cross or a, a cross? I'm saying it's a cross. Yeah. Oh, okay. Either way. <laughs> Dave, the religious man. <laughs> Jeez. And it kind of goes like he lost with a bet. his cheek. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's so he didn't, he, Aaron, 16. he didn't fuck Aaron Neville. He, when he was 16, he got it. How have we never noticed this? Yeah. I know. How have you never noticed it? I don't <laughs> know why we? you. Maybe you should look in the mirror. Get a thesaurus or an Aaron Neville. Sure. Best of Al right. Neville brothers. You're, you're right. Wait a minute. Aaron Neville... <laughs> Got this. First off. Do you have a beard, maybe? He was, you can, first off, okay. Him and Linda Ronstadt oh, singing, I don't know much, songs. but I know I love it. Yeah. He was this crazy guy because he just looked like a bodybuilder. Yeah. And he was, this face. he was a rough, tough dude. Voice you get a, of an angel. You get a cross Wait. on your cheek. Now, by the way, I think he's been dead. He's dead? For a little while, I think. Well, or his so brother. He's been dead. One of the Neville's. Wait, wasn't the first lyric of that, look at this face? Yes. Yes. Shit. Wow. When he was never doing... going to look at his face the same. But... He was telling us what he wanted us to do. Yeah, men really are upfront about who they are. He, he got a cross the first on his cheek Gina, look when at he was face. 16. <laughs> yeah. but Aaron's 81. He was 16. Out of, and dead? <laughs> and, and alive. And alive is his brother's on the Neville? Uh, I'm checking on the brother. Right. So, yeah, got his tattoo when he was 16. Yeah. His dad was so pissed. He, uh, got... he made him scrub it with Brillo pads and octagon soap. Doesn't the skin work. came off, but the tattoo stayed. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then in 95, he came out with an album called Tattooed Heart. So he had them go over and <laughs> outline it face. to freshen it up. Oh, good. Wow. Good for him. Be who you want to be. Commit, baby. Remember when he was the shill for the Cotton Council? But forever grow No, it seems vaguely it racist. racist. <laughs> right, yeah. Am I wrong? No, I don't. don't. You remember, oh, I remember Anita Bryant singing about orange juice, but oh, uh, look, no. if he got that when he was sixteen in the in the sixties or the late fifties or or something, you know. No, it, sir. Imagine that you got a tattoo on you. This is not Mike Tyson. No, yeah, this time. is post this Malone, is, and, and it's on your face, so you can't see it. But every time you look in the mirror, you're like, oh yeah, I did oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. That's me. That's right. Art died in 2019. Art Neville, I knew oh, it. brother. And uh, all right, so wow. yeah, him singing the video of him singing with Linda. I love that song. Good song. It really this guy's had a crazy career. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, while well, like, while they look for that, can we just talk for? Do you have it right now? Okay. Can we just talk for a second about Britney Spears? Because yeah. I follow her religiously, and I didn't know this. She just closed her Instagram account. Oh, oh. no! Yeah. Yeah, Holy because, shit! I don't know. No, you this don't is leave with that shit. For the best. <laughs> <laughs> she has been going off the rails the know. last couple of weeks, yeah. like really calling out dad and really saying, like you know, I you know, wishing death upon them. Nice. Um, she should get nice. together with Kanye. Oh, that would be a, would it, no, a, this is a gatekeeper a of the dual conservatorship. Situation. Yeah, right. A nice soft landing for that's Kanye. That's right. That's you know? right. Well, she's super pissed. She's been acting a little erratic, mostly toward the family, you know, the sister and the the dad. And she, uh, her final post that she deleted was she would she said she wants to be feared, not loved. Mm. So we're getting a new <sighs> Britney. Oh, I like it. And uh, now we just now we can't follow it in she real time. She got like a. $17 million book advance yeah, or yeah. something. We have Aaron Neville oh, and good. Uh, Linda. Oh, no, you need the video because he's got no sleeves. <laughs> Can't have him all dude up with his sleeves. I thought he had huge guns. Yeah, Chris. like denim and frayed. Yeah, he would do like mm. like a denim vest mm -hmm. Ooh. jacket yep. and just had and the, sword the big guns with that, that voice of an angel. <laughs> Did he have a full beard? It's like the Mandela effect that none of us realized he had a sword on his face. He's baby faced here, yeah. Wow. yeah. From the wrong angle. Right, let's... Now, when his dad oh, man. was when his, watch the whole thing. When his, when his dad was telling him to go at his cheek with the Brillo pad, you think he told him to go for the birthmark when he was done? <laughs> like while you're in there. And what are you doing with that? By the way, you got shit on your face. You, you know what I mean? Like, well, it's just a little extra shit. You, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's a pretty, pretty, pretty it's, badass it's birthmark pronounced. on there. Yeah. The dad yeah. clearly doesn't understand how skin works. Do right. you, you got that big one. He's got a big old. Yeah. Do you go for it? I mean, do you, I think I, as a I kid, lean in. you probably do. 
I think as a kid, you'd probably go for it. You want to get rid of it? I, I would, probably. I as a kid, you don't want to be different, Yeah, right? I think it would be most people's instinct, most kids' instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Because your differences aren't celebrated. You know, everyone's a bully. I'm guessing yeah. with the cheek tattoo, he didn't grow up in an environment where they had lots of extra cash for the, right. for the, for the surgery cosmetic and surgery. the cosmetic surgery. And yeah. that Wait kind a of second. Stuff. His, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so uh, his dad's reaction when he got the tattoo, he, uh, he said... You got that birthmark, and you have a mole over your eye. Oh my gosh! You're gonna put another thing on your face. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I I'm get glad that. you. I'm I glad you said that. Pragmatic man. man. Tough love. No, no, no. I get it. I totally get it. It just, it just, now it totally clicks. Also, That's he wanted to be in control of the way people are looking at him crazy with his mm, face. This, uh, this feels very love line. Oh, you know what uh, I mean? yeah. Uh, this like, is my ship he, now. Exactly. You know, like how mm. kids get real goth. Yeah. Because they're in control of also, what people are looking at. Who's tattooing a kid? That's a good question. Mm, yeah. I'd, I'd say another kid. <laughs> Probably. Like another minor. Based off of that design, no it seemed like than, another child than did it. 17. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was shaking the keys, going, stop looking at the birthmark. Yes. Check out the giant. <laughs> crucifix yes. on my cheek. And then he so. wound up himself with that and goes, check out this career I'm going to get. That's right. So, yeah. It's, a good mm-hmm. time. it's, it's all in there. All right. One more. Tina okay. Graham. Well, I've been meaning to get to this and I'm glad the ladies are here to weigh in. Okay. Here we go. Uh, some Japanese schools have um, banned female students from wearing their hair in ponytails oh God. because the nape of the neck could sexually excite male students, according to Vice <laughs> News. Uh, a former middle school teacher, Matoki Sugiyama, told Vice the reasoning is similar to that why girls are only allowed to wear white underwear to school um, so that it doesn't show through their uniforms. He went on to say that because there's such a lack of criticism and the rules have become so normalized, everyone just does it. Um, according to Vice... How thin yeah. are the uniforms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get more fabric. Yeah, oh, Probably yeah, linen. Double quilt that Facial shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I never personally, I mean, you know, I, I like an updo. Is that too sexy just to put your, throw your hair in a ponytail? No. I feel like hair down is sexier than hair in yeah, ponytail. Right. That's, that's all that's the girls the in the movies. Culture. They take their glasses off, their hair comes down, that's and right. then you get the boner. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But I've, in, I've talked about yeah. it with a few guys here, and we, we all love the high ponytail. A high mm-hmm. pony, like a high Ariana ponytails. Grande ponytail. Yeah. I yeah. love too. That's different, though. I think. I mean, I feel like they're not going to school with the high ponytail. Yeah, that's like if a genie fucked a prostitute, and of course that's hot. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, of course, we like that. that. We're just yeah. talking. We're talking about like Joe from Facts of Life ponytail. Mm. Yeah, like a regular ponytail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the nape of the neck is sexy, but I. I mean, it's, it's not it's on a, a child. <laughs> well, it's to also, another child. Also, another a child. Exactly. A male child isn't gonna go. Oh, I want to fuck that neck. Like it's not. You don't even know to look at that like you, you don't even know what's in between her let like how do you this is, they're gonna you know. get horny looking at something and it doesn't matter what you cover up they're gonna figure a way to get erect that's being they're, a they're penis weird, adolescent. their culture i've always found strange because they're so buttoned down on so many aspects of it you know bowing and high which I, I like the high yeah. by the way i always want that for the cell phone calls because i talk long and at some point i go are you still there? <laughs> but if they just said hi every uh-huh. couple seconds, I'd know they were around. But there's that. Then there's also, also home of Bukaki. So it's like they. <gasps> I it? love that store. They're rain. They got rain. So best picture. <laughs> Lady <laughs> Gaga killed it in that movie. Home of Bukaki. <laughs> House of Bukaki. Japanese word, yeah. <laughs> huh. Yeah. yeah, that and means like, we're, we're gonna eat sushi off of a naked person. Which I feel like yeah. Americans did that, or did the Japanese start that? I think did they, we fetishize it. I think it? they started. Maybe, maybe we rubbed our own stink on their sushi. Yeah, it's but possible. I, I don't know, Chris. See if we can figure that one out. <laughs> I, the whole point is, is they're like Mormons or Utah. They're sort of mm-hmm. buttoned down hard, and then there's the other ones that just go full crazy. I mean, it's it's like they're the culture is like Japanese people seem like. Kind of buttoned down, mm-hmm. or you see crazy hair, slammed Acura, full Fast mm. and Furious, like whatever. None- well, that's the response to being repressed, though. Yeah, yeah. the, the, yeah. the buttoned right. down one places way the are always the places where the the sex work, even if it's more hidden, mm. is the freakiest, more. is like the least safe for women. So. When, when I was in Salt Lake City, and I just noticed mm. more tattoos per capita mm. than anybody mm-hmm. there amongst the ones that were doing yeah, that you, you know they back. kept going you would have loved those dudes <laughs> <laughs> i the guy, the guy with the tattoos i was talking about who i dated is from salt, salt lake city, city. Oh, oh, amazing oh, nailed oh, it oh, oh, all right we, we can wrap this up there. <laughs> originate in japan the eating the sushi off the 
Japanese girl. You both are so vindicated today. <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> I thought it was Samantha from Sex and the City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. She did do that. If I forget that reference. I watch that shit out of nice. that Nice. That's, That's surprising. Right. I love Sex and the City. Yeah, he's a fan. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All, All right. right. Let's bring her home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Ba 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 ba. What are we doing the news? That was the news with Gina. Grant. All right, I'm going to be in Indianapolis at uh, Helium May sixth uh, and seventh, and uh, then we're all going to Huntington Beach to Sea Lakes to do a live podcast. It'll be May twentieth. You can go to amcrow.com for all that. The stand-up special, the comedy special, guys, we fucked our special That's day. Great. It's available. It's very funny. I watched it last night. It's oh, available. Thanks. Thank you. For free on YouTube and also podcast, guys. We fucked as well. Thank you guys for uh, coming in. And I, I, I assume it's going to be big things going on over there with Fox. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, so guys. keep us uh, keep us posted. Yeah. We will. All right. So until next time, we're playing music. Oh, we got something. <laughs> oh, I got a spot. Oh, oh, I got I got myself screwed up. Geico. Just 30 seconds with Geico. Love to save some money on your insurance? Of course you would. And who wouldn't love a deal? That's when Geico comes in. Uh, rates are everything when it comes to insurance, and Geico's going to save you some money. Car, truck, motorcycle, boat, RV, even homeowners or condos, renters insurance. Save a ton when you go with Geico. And you can also go with their mobile app, 24-7 roadside assistance and... Uh, it's a no-brainer when you switch to Geico. So go to Geico today. All right, now we can cue up the music. And until next time, this is Adam for Christina and Corinne and Gina and Bald saying mahalo. I'm Bobby Hollander, and I'd like to introduce you to a new tape. Are you looking to spank it when you're by yourself? Well, you're going to get an opportunity with the personal touch. Oh my God, is this thing hot? It's like a war zone in Ukraine. Uh, it's that hot. Yeah, let me, let me jump in. 